Chapter 171. Uh, can I return it? Fruits are non-returnable goods. Don't worry, miss. We provide top-grade Musang King, so it's definitely of good quality. Yes, I know that, and I do trust that your goods are of good quality. But I don't need that many. Miss, I really can't process a return for this. Fruits are non-returnable ones sold. On the other end, the owner tried hard to express his keenness to complete the sale. Meanwhile, Anastasia was at a loss for what to do. All right then, I'll make a phone call and get back to you. As soon as Anastasia put down her cell phone, she instantly grabbed the landline and dialed the number to the office of a specific man. Hello, the man answered the phone in a low voice. Did you order me a truckload of Musang King durians? Anastasia questioned him immediately. Yup, you mentioned that you wanted the freedom to have durians whenever you crave them, so I'll help you achieve this wish today. You can have as many of them as you want, Elliot spoke up and implied that the durians today were his treat. However, Anastasia was quite speechless and she thought, doesn't he realize that one can't have too many durians? It's fine to have some occasionally, but if too much is consumed in one day then there are a lot of side effects that would occur subsequently. The milder symptoms would be a sore throat and as for the worst case scenario, one would even experience constipation. I think you should return it. I can't finish that many. I just had one last night so I can't have too many at a time. Why not? On the other end, the man clearly knew nothing about durians. Although he was a knowledgeable man, there were also some things that he was totally clueless off. That's because durians can cause sore throats. I can't have too much, Anastasia could only try her best to explain, but the other side effects sounded slightly indecent so she didn't mention that. I never return any item that I've paid for. You can decide how you want to deal with it, but... You! I have a meeting to attend now, after Elliot said that, he hung up on her. Meanwhile, Anastasia had to return the call of the fruit store owner, yet the purchaser of the items refused to pay heed to her words, so she was in a dilemma at the moment. In the end, she thought to herself, I guess I'll just treat everyone to durians then. Subsequently, she reached out and dialed Felicia's number to explain the situation. On the other end of the line, Felicia was elated. This is a simple matter. I'll arrange for everyone in the office to have one each, okay? Please make the arrangements then, but don't say that this is my treat. Let them know that it's President Pressgrave's treat. Upon hearing that, Felicia burst into laughter. Are you sure that you want to let them know it's his treat? Yes, just say that. I don't want to take this credit, Anastasia insisted. Sure, we'll leave it at that then. Ten minutes later, the fruit store owner happily distributed durians by the entrance of the office, and every staff member of the company who walked past was given one. This went on and no one was left out until every piece of fruit was gone. After all that, Grace came back upstairs in good spirits and she held two durians in her hands. Anastasia expressed her gratitude as Grace excitedly mentioned, Anastasia, do you know who treated us to this? It's President Pressgrave. It's the Musang King variety too. Everyone's so happy. At that moment, Anastasia tried to stifle her laughter. That's great. I'm quite happy too. After Grace had walked out of the room, Anastasia clutched at her stomach and placed her head on the tabletop. She was consumed with uncontrollable laughter and she nearly fell to the ground. I wonder what Elliot's expression will be like if he finds out about this. Meanwhile, in the meeting room at the Pressgrave group, the room was solemnly silent as Elliot sat at the head of the table. He gave out an air of dominance seen in a leader and under the illumination of the projector lamp, he clearly gave out the feeling of a strong president. The people in attendance today were all the upper management team of the Pressgrave group, and each one of them was involved in running various large-scale projects all over the world. They had to report back to Elliot on the progress of their projects daily and there was no room for any errors or omissions. The Pressgrave group was involved in various financial schemes worldwide, so the company was, in fact, much more than just a leading business in the country. After Elliot's appointment as the president, 
he had kept close control of the development of the company, he ended up leading the Pressgrave Group toward a much brighter future than ever. Despite the Pressgrave Group going through several financial crises, the giant corporation remained strong and continued to sail through the waves of the corporate world. The meeting ended at 11.3 a.m. and Elliot went back to his office after that. At that moment, Ray stood by his side with pursed lips, and he looked as if he had something to report on. Elliot glanced at him and questioned, What's wrong? Chapter 172 Ray had gone for facial expression management classes before but right now, he couldn't contain himself and laughed out loud. President Pressgrave, the truckload of Musang King durians that you ordered for Miss Tillman was distributed to the entire company. The problem is, Miss Tillman gave the credit to you, Elliot's handsome expression stiffened slightly when he heard that. Is that so? Yeah. Anyway, everyone's full of gratitude for you. As soon as Ray finished saying that, he instantly covered his lips and burst into laughter before quickly stifling his laughter while he covered his mouth once again. It's fine to laugh, Elliot shot Ray a look. I just didn't expect her to be so generous and actually distribute everything. Suddenly, Elliot recalled something and he instantly took his cell phone and dialed his grandmother's number. Hello, Elliot. Do you have something to talk to me about? Harriet's voice rang out. Grandma, I would like to have lunch with you today. We haven't seen each other for days. I'd prefer to have dinner together. I have a lunch date today. What sort of lunch date is it? Can I join you? It wouldn't be convenient, Harriet spoke up frankly. It's just a meal. Well, I'll be frank with you. I have a lunch date with Nigel and Anastasia today. I wanted to talk to them about their engagement the other day. I've decided that it's time to pick a date for them. Include me for the lunch date then. I want to join the meal too, Elliot responded with a smile. Okay. I don't mind you joining us, but don't you dare mess things up. Don't worry. I won't do that, Elliot curved his lips into a smile. I'm not going to mess things up because this won't go to plan anyway. In a blink of an eye, it was 11.2 a.m. and Anastasia glanced at her cell phone from time to time as she waited for Harriet to call her regarding the lunch date. Just then, Anastasia's cell phone rang and she quickly grabbed it to take a look. Indeed, it was Harriet on the line, so she took a deep breath before answering the phone. Hello, old Madam Pressgrave. Anastasia, you can come downstairs now. My car is about to reach the entrance of your company, it turned out that Harriet had come in person to fetch Anastasia. At that moment, Anastasia felt quite flattered and she revealed a smile. Okay, I'll be downstairs shortly. Anastasia walked out of the entrance to see a black car parked by the entrance and the dominantly displayed golden logo of the Rolls Royce was unmistakable. The driver personally got out to open the door for Anastasia as she expressed her gratitude. Thank you. You're welcome, Miss Tillman, the driver replied. And so, Anastasia got into the back passenger seat and saw that Harriet was dressed elegantly in a dark purple dress lined with golden threads. The button of the dress was made out of ruby and it was clear to the eye that it was a handmade, commissioned piece. Three, hello, old Madame Pressgrave. Anastasia greeted Harriet. It's been days since we last met. What happened to your finger? Harriet instantly noticed Anastasia's bandaged finger. It's fine. I accidentally hurt myself. Was it a bad cut? It's not too serious. It's just a minor cut. Anastasia curled up her lips and smiled. Upon hearing that, Harriet nodded her head. Try to be more careful next time. With that, the elderly woman glanced out of the car window at the building in front. Do you work here? Yeah. That's great. Elliot has taken over your company, so it's part of our family business now. It would be much easier for us to help you out in the future. Meanwhile, Anastasia felt quite uneasy. Elliot had not only taken over bourgeois jewelry atelier for the sake of helping a lowly staff like her, but he had actually bought over the world-renowned QR International Group that backed the bourgeois jewelry atelier brand. Old Madame Pressgrave, I'm fine so there's no need to go all the way out to help me, Anastasia expressed her sincere gratitude. You don't have to be shy child, 
We are obliged to do that. I'm also trying to redeem myself by helping you. It makes me feel slightly better by doing so. Harriet's eyes were red-rimmed as she spoke. I am forever indebted to your mother and there's nothing I can do to fully repay her in this lifetime. Surprised, Anastasia asked, Old Madam Pressgrave, why would you say so? You might not realize this, but both Elliot's parents passed away at the same time back then and I had to single-handedly hold the fort for the entire Pressgrave group. At the same time, I had to bring up a young Elliot. At that point in life, I held all of my hopes upon Elliot, so if something bad had occurred to him, I would have lost the remaining pillar of strength in my life. Your mother's ultimate sacrifice gave us the Pressgrave group that we have today. Chapter 173 Anastasia's heart sank upon hearing that. She couldn't even imagine the state of Harriet's situation back then. The latter was a 50-year-old woman trying to cope with the sudden loss of her son and daughter-in-law, and she had to step up to manage a multi-million company single-handedly. Furthermore, she had to raise a young grandson and back then, Elliot was her only hope. Right now, Elliot had grown up to become an independent man and he ran the company well, so she could finally relax and enjoy a life of retirement. Your mother's a great woman and though I've never spoken to her before, she has a mighty and heroic presence in my heart. Anastasia was also quite young barely two years old back then, so her impression of her mother was just the exceptionally heroic-looking woman in the photos. At that time, her father had just started up his business, so Anastasia was raised by her maternal grandmother. Two years later, her father had remarried and that was when Naomi joined their family. Naomi had brought along a daughter with her. After Anastasia's grandmother had passed away due to illness, her father finally brought Anastasia back home to care for her. At that point, Harriet quickly halted the current topic as she didn't want to bring up Anastasia's painful past, so she smiled and asked, Anastasia, why don't you make a guess as to who's the other person joining us for lunch? In fact, Anastasia was quite confident that it was Nigel joining them for lunch, but she could only act confused. Did you invite another person to join us? It's Nigel. I asked the two of you out for lunch with me to have a proper discussion. It was totally beyond my expectation that you were the little girl who saved Nigel back then. It must be fate. Anastasia curled up her lips and revealed a smile. I didn't expect that he was your grandson either. Harriet requested for Anastasia to explain the process of how she saved Nigel in detail, so Anastasia acceded to the former's request and thoroughly spoke about the ordeal. Anastasia also shared with Harriet some of her experiences with Nigel when they were overseas. Meanwhile, Harriet listened on and concluded in her mind that it was proof of Anastasia and Nigel's affectionate relationship. As such, the elderly woman was very intent on bringing the couple together. On Synastasia was part of the Manson family, then Harriet could naturally continue to provide support and compensation for Anastasia in every aspect. At the moment, a grey-coloured sports car was also heading in the direction of the restaurant. Nigel had received Harriet's phone call the previous night and she had instructed him to dress up well for lunch today, as Anastasia would be in attendance too. As a result, Nigel had woken up early to go to the barber's and he had gotten a stylish haircut for today's lunch date. His originally quite good-looking face was much more handsome and full of vigor than ever after all the grooming. Presently, Nigel had arrived at the restaurant and remained in his car. Taking a look at himself in the mirror, he cheered for himself. Nigel Manson, you must win Anastasia's heart today and get her to agree to your proposal. Good luck. He then pushed open the car door and got out of the car to enter the restaurant. Subsequently, the waiter greeted him and escorted him to the direction of the private room as he waited there. Meanwhile, Harriet and Anastasia arrived at 11.5 a.m. Throughout their journey, the latter was preoccupied with her thoughts as she tried to figure out how to explain the matter of the proposal to Harriet so that Harriet could give up on the thought of making arrangements for their marriage. As soon as they entered the private room, Nigel instantly stood up to greet them and he lovingly addressed Harriet, Grandma, 
you're here. After he had said that, he directed his affectionate almond-shaped eyes toward Anastasia. Anastasia, meanwhile, Anastasia greeted him with a smile. You're quite early today, I wouldn't dare to be late for lunch with you, Nigel responded wittily. Upon hearing that, Anastasia couldn't contain herself and she laughed upon hearing his words. Harriet watched their interaction and she was secretly quite pleased. They are indeed a perfect match for each other. They look so compatible. What happened to your finger? Let me have a look at it. Nigel had noticed it almost instantly so he quickly reached out to hold her hand and check on her wound. In response, Anastasia hastily withdrew her hand. I'm fine. I accidentally cut myself while I was cutting some vegetables. That's so careless of you. You should avoid cooking from now on. I'll treat you to your meals. No, Jared's not used to eating out. Come on and take a seat. Let's order our food. Harriet sat at the head of the table and the manager of the restaurant came in personally to take their order. At the same time, he introduced to them the restaurant's specialties. Anastasia sat there and listened to him introduce their fresh and imported, luxurious ingredients which were all air-flown to the restaurant, and she realized by listening to the way the ingredients were obtained that this was clearly not a restaurant that could be afforded by the general population. Serve us one of each then, Harriet announced with a swagger. Chapter 174 Will it be just the three of you today? The manager asked with a smile. At that moment, Harriet suddenly recalled that there was another person joining them, so she quickly responded, There will be four of us today, Minstonly, Anastasia and Nigel exchanged looks with each other. Is there a mysterious guest? Who is it? Harriet, however, was busy chatting with the manager, so they didn't interrupt the conversation. All of a sudden, a waiter pushed open the door from the outside and a strapping, tall figure walked into the room. He had his suit jacket in his hand, and he was dressed in a white dress shirt paired with black trousers. In short, his attire was minimalistic yet full of elegance. Anastasia's beautiful eyes widened upon seeing the man, and she was quite stunned to find that he was here too. The person who walked into the room was in fact Elliot the man who had shamelessly mentioned he wanted to join the lunch date the night before. At the same time, Nigel narrowed his almond-shaped eyes too. Why did Grandma invite him along? He's just going to ruin everything. Elliot, how come you're here too? Don't you have any lunch conferences to attend? Nigel lifted his brows and asked questioningly. Elliot pulled out a chair and purposely took a seat next to Anastasia before he responded with a smile, Well, I wasn't invited to any lunch conferences, so I had no choice but to barge in and join your lunch date too. But I'm sure there are plenty of people keen to give you a treat. Nigel didn't believe a single word that Elliot said. Furthermore, Nigel was quite sure that his cousin must have purposely turned up to mess things up. Meanwhile, Harriet smiled upon seeing both of her grandsons in attendance. Elia mentioned to me last night that he didn't have any lunch plans for today, so I invited him along. At that moment, Anastasia turned her head to glance at the man in question, and she noticed that his handsome face had stiffened slightly. Elliot clearly didn't expect that Harriet would expose his lie. In the end, he took his cup of tea into his hand and took a sip from it. At the same time, he peered across from the edge of his teacup, and his dark gaze went toward the woman next to him. As for Anastasia, she purposely turned in the other direction as soon as she sensed his eyes on her. Anastasia, I'm sure that there's no need to introduce this person to you, right? He's my grandson, Elliot Presgrave. You guys must have encountered each other at the office, I believe? Harriet asked with a smile. Meanwhile, Anastasia had a slightly abashed look on her face as she spoke up guiltily. Yes, we've met. Not only have we met, but we've also even kissed more than once. It was mainly because of Elliot's shameless personality and that he had forcefully kissed her each time. At that moment, Nigel reached out to hold Harriet's hand. Grandma, why don't you hurry up and tell us the purpose of this lunch date today? Anastasia's heart skipped a beat as she heard that, and she turned to look at Harriet. At the same time, 
Harriet glanced at Anastasia with a smile on her face before turning to glance at Nigel, who was seated next to Harriet. Anastasia and Nigel, I'm very happy to know that the two of you are in a relationship, so I've asked the two of you out today to discuss the date for the wedding. That way, we can get the ceremony organized as soon as possible. At that point, Anastasia thought to herself, Elliot was right in his guess. Harriet has actually taken the proposal for real. As for Nigel, he lifted his brows happily. Sure, Grandma, why don't you pick a date for us so that Anastasia and I can proceed with the wedding ceremony as soon as possible? Anastasia, how does that sound? Meanwhile, Elliot crossed his arms together and looked at the woman next to him with a slightly gloating look on his face as he waited to see how she was going to handle this. On the other hand, Anastasia shot a resigned look at Nigel before she turned to speak to Harriet. Old Madam Pressgrave, Nigel was just fooling around when he proposed to me that day. Don't take it seriously. We're just good friends. What? How can one fool around with a marriage proposal? Harriet stared at her with an aghast look before turning to look at Nigel. However, Nigel solemnly spoke up. Anastasia, I was quite serious during the marriage proposal. I would like to take your hand in marriage and have you as my wife. Please allow me to care for you for the rest of our lives. At that point, Anastasia lifted her head and she saw Nigel's expectant and loving expression. She couldn't help panicking as she pursed her lips. All of a sudden, she couldn't seem to figure out how to express her rejection with Harriet present. After all, she was mindful of maintaining Nigel's reputation too. As for Elliot, he reached out and took a sip from his cup. His dark eyes were deep and mysterious, and one couldn't quite tell what was on his mind. In fact, he was also waiting for the woman next to him to express her stance. Look, Nigel's sincerely in love with you, Anastasia. He's a great guy and I do hope that you can consider him as a prospect. Harriet tried to matchmake the two, as she really hoped that Anastasia could be a part of the family too. All of a sudden, Anastasia found herself in a rut as she mumbled, Old Madam Pressgrave, I, Anastasia, I'm sincere in my feelings. Ever since you saved my life, I made up my mind that my entire soul and self would belong solely to you. Nigel took this opportunity to confess his true feelings. He also hoped that with Harriet present, Anastasia would no longer shy away from his sincere feelings. Chapter 175 Anastasia's pair of beautiful eyes shifted from left to right. She also pursed her lips for a moment before biting on her lower lip. At that point, she looked deeply troubled as she struggled to come up with a decision. As for Elliot, he continued to hold his cup as he gracefully sipped some tea. His thick eyelashes formed a dense canopy and his eyes were covered thus masking the intense, penetrating look in them. Anastasia suddenly turned to shoot him a fleeting yet pleading look, but she could only manage to catch his nonchalant look from his handsome side profile. He behaved as if this had nothing to do with him, and he clearly wasn't going to offer her any help at all. She merely shot him a quick look before lowering her eyes. At the same time, she was quite frustrated as she grumbled to herself, what did I expect from him anyway? He's just here today to watch me make a fool of myself, or perhaps he's just here to have some fun. Anastasia, do you find it quite hard to accept Nigel's marriage proposal? Harriet's warm voice suddenly rang out. As for Nigel, the expectant look in his eyes was evident because he wanted an answer. It was obvious that he was mainly after a sincere reply from Anastasia. Anastasia didn't blame Nigel for that because she knew that just like Elliot, Nigel's feelings toward her included a strong sense of gratitude. Even if he sincerely liked her, she couldn't accept him anyway. I'm sorry, Nigel, and I'm sorry, old Madam Pressgrave. I can't accept Nigel's proposal, Anastasia lifted her head and she had a clear look in her eyes as she spoke in a firm voice. Meanwhile, the man seated next to her, who was busy sipping tea, revealed a slight and unnoticeable smile. Why is that so? Harriet exclaimed in surprise. Nigel's heart sank but he wasn't angry with Anastasia because he had all the patience in the world for her. 
he was determined not to back down despite her multiple rejections all this while. That's because I have made up my mind to remain single for the rest of my life. Anastasia's firm voice rang out once again. Puffed. Suddenly, the man next to her, who was initially elegantly sipping his tea, choked on his drink. He quickly covered his mouth with his large palm as he hastily turned his head to stare at her. Meanwhile, Anastasia faced the stunned looks of the three individuals in front of her, and she explained in an exceptionally calm voice, I already have a child and he's my whole world. Old Madam Pressgrave, I hope that you can understand my circumstances as a single mother. Even if I choose to remarry, I wouldn't have another child because I want to focus my love and efforts on my son. I think Nigel deserves a better woman, Lanastasia knew that her words would definitely garner Harriet's support. After all, the latter was a woman, so she would naturally be able to understand the situation of a mother's refusal to build a new family with a kid in tow. If she conceived a second child, then it was inevitable for the first child to experience some suffering. Upon hearing that, Nigel instantly expressed himself, Anastasia, Jared's just like my own flesh and blood, and I'll definitely treat him the same way as I would treat my own son. Also, I'm willing to respect your wishes and we don't need to have another child. I'll focus on raising Jared with you. What do you think of that? Meanwhile, Harriet was quite frantic though she didn't show it. How can that be fine? Nigel's father is not going to agree to that and my daughter definitely won't allow that too. The Manson family line needs to be passed on. At that moment, Elliot frowned and turned to speak to Nigel. Nigel, stop being ridiculous. You have to respect your parents' wishes too. Elliot, I can make my own decision on this matter, Nigel replied calmly, as he intentionally wanted to show Elliot how determined he was in pursuing Anastasia. Nigel, I'm very flattered by your sincere feelings, but I've made up my mind to remain single for the rest of my life. I'm not going to enter into a marriage with any other man, and you're no exception, Anastasia made her stance clear and there was no going back on her words because these were her actual thoughts too. Elliot's expression instantly darkened as soon as she finished her sentence. He was seated next to her, and he turned to glare at her, Miss Tillman, you shouldn't speak so rashly just yet. You should give yourself some room for changing your mind just in case. Otherwise, it would be embarrassing for you if you changed your mind in the future. In response, Anastasia glared at him. I'll definitely do as I said, so there's no need for you to be concerned, President Pressgrave. Suddenly, Harriet was taken aback. What does Elia mean by that? I don't get it. At that moment, their food arrived and Harriet noticed that the atmosphere seemed quite tense, so she quickly gestured at Anastasia. Come on, girl. Let's stop chatting and grab a bite. We can talk as we eat. Here, Anastasia. Try this. Nigel reached out and served some salad onto her plate over the table. Upon seeing that, Anastasia politely thanked him. Thanks, Nigel. I'll help myself. Meanwhile, Harriet suddenly lamented. Anastasia, it must have been destined for us to meet. So I sincerely hope that we can come together and become family members. Chapter 176 I'm blessed to have made acquaintance with all of you too. Your mother sacrificed herself to save Elliot and you saved Nigel's life while overseas, so I've already regarded you as my family after these two huge acts of kindness. Suddenly, Nigel was caught by surprise as he lifted his head and exclaimed, Grandma, what did you just say? Anastasia's mom saved Elliot's life. What happened back then? Meanwhile, Harriet turned in his direction and replied, You've been overseas all these years, so it's quite normal for you to be unaware of this incident. Elliot was kidnapped when he was six years old, and Anastasia's mother sacrificed her life to save him. We're forever indebted to Anastasia and her family. Nigel's eyes widened in surprise and he couldn't quite believe his ears. It was beyond his wildest dreams that Anastasia and Elliot also had such a great act of kindness linking the two of them. Is that why Elliot steadfastly stays by Anastasia's side? Is he also intent on repaying Anastasia for everything that she had done, 
just like me. Elliot's actions of taking control of the QR jewelry group and the current situation with him being permanently stationed at the office of Bourgeois Jewelry Atelier clearly is his way of repaying Anastasia for her great act. Suddenly, Harriet mentioned, I need to go to the washroom, old Madame Pressgrave, I'll go with you. Anastasia quickly placed down her cutlery and got up to escort Harriet from her seat. Meanwhile, Harriet happily walked with Anastasia to the washroom. As soon as the door swung shut after them, Nigel turned to Elliot with a sharp look in his eyes. Elliot, are you pursuing Anastasia? Upon hearing that, Elliot answered the question without flinching. Yes, are you just trying to repay her kind act, or are you truly fond of her? Nigel interrogated Elliot bluntly. Both of the reasons are valid to me, Elliot voiced out in a low voice. In all honesty, he was indeed quite reluctant to go after the same girl as his cousin. I went after Anastasia first, so you shouldn't fight me for her affections, Nigel said that while clenching his fist tightly. Precedence doesn't mean anything in this. The deserving person of her affections should be whoever that's more capable. Or perhaps, to be more accurate, she's the one who gets to have a say. In that case, let's compete equally for her affections and see which one of us manages to win her heart. If you succeed, then I'll acknowledge her as my sister-in-law, and vice versa if I win. What do you say? Nigel bluntly announced that they should compete equally with each other. As such, if he failed in his bid and the other party was Elliot, then he would admit his defeat graciously. After all, Nigel knew that he was not as capable as his cousin, but he refused to give up without a fight and he wanted to try and make a bid at it. All right, let's compete equally then. Elliot agreed to this solution as this was the best way that wouldn't affect their kinship. Shortly after that, Harriet and Anastasia came back from the washroom and the two men immediately acted as if nothing had happened. They continued to enjoy their meal and sip from their teacups and the confrontational vibe from earlier dissipated without a trace. Anastasia, I would like to propose a toast with this cup of tea in place of champagne. Harriet held a teacup in her hand and walked toward Anastasia. Extremely flattered, Anastasia quickly got up to toast Harriet. Here's a toast to you too. Next time, bring Jared over to our house to have some fun. I would very much like to meet him, Harriet announced. Sure, I'll bring him over to pay you a visit once we're free, Anastasia agreed without any hesitation. Just then, Anastasia was engrossed in enjoying her meal when she suddenly sensed someone serving something to her plate. She assumed that it was Nigel but it seemed to be coming from another direction, so she looked up and found out that it was Elliot looking at her. It turned out that he was the one who had served her some food. Instantly, she anxiously glanced at him and shot him a warning look. She didn't want to appear to intimate with him around Harriet. Meanwhile, Nigel saw everything and he couldn't contain the desolateness that arose within him. He felt as if he was one step behind in everything. He couldn't help wishing that he had taken over the bourgeois jewelry atelier so that Anastasia could work for him and subsequently, he would be able to court her every day during working hours. However, she was now Elliot's subordinate and he had the perfect opportunity to take advantage of the situation. At that point, Nigel was quite downcast so he found the meal quite bland and tasteless. It felt as if every bite turned to sawdust. Finally, the meal ended and Elliot took a look at the time before mentioning to Harriet, Grandma, I'll head back to the office now. What? Are you leaving so soon? Harriet was quite surprised to hear that. Yes. I'll send Miss Tillman back too, since we're heading in the same direction. As soon as Elliot finished saying that, he turned to Anastasia, who was still in her seat. Let's go, he urged. Meanwhile, Anastasia was momentarily stunned before she quickly grabbed her bag and bade Harriet farewell. Old Madam Pressgrave, I'll see you next time. Chapter 177 With that, Anastasia turned to Elliot and casually commented, Thanks for the kind offer, President Pressgrave. However, Nigel hurriedly got up from his seat and offered, Anastasia, I can give you a ride. At that point, Anastasia quickly turned around. Nigel, do
Do stay on and finish the meal with your grandmother. I'll catch a ride with President Pressgrave as we're heading in the same direction anyway. After that, Nigel could only watch helplessly as the two of them left together, and he couldn't contain the desolateness that rose up within him. Is Anastasia interested in Elliot? Upon entering the elevator, Anastasia keenly sensed that the man next to her was in a horrible mood. Elliot had a dark expression on his face and it was as if he had suffered a huge loss in his business. Instantly, she became quite reluctant to catch a ride with him so as soon as the doors to the elevator slid open with a ping, she turned to him and immediately said, President Pressgrave, thanks for your offer but I'll just catch a cab. Why? Elliot shot her a look. Why? It's because you're obviously in a bad mood so I better avoid courting trouble. It's not a big deal. I just want to catch a cab. Anastasia lifted her head and replied before quickly walking off in the direction of the street. Suddenly, a large palm reached out and possessively grabbed hold of her wrist before dragging her to the direction of a car. Elliot pulled open the door to the front passenger seat and gestured for her to get into his car. Meanwhile, Anastasia frowned. This guy is too domineering. Can't I go back by myself without catching a ride with him? In the end, Anastasia ended up getting into the car and Elliot entered the driver's seat too. Subsequently, the black car drove off and merged slowly into the traffic. Anastasia was quite perplexed as to why Elliot suddenly lost his temper but despite racking her brain for the reason, she couldn't quite figure it out. He was an unfathomable individual and his emotions were quite unpredictable most of the time. All of a sudden, Elliot's low, interrogating voice rang out. You mentioned earlier that you intend to remain single for the rest of your life. Are you serious about that? At that point, Anastasia was stunned and she turned her head to stare at his handsome side profile. Similarly, he turned his head too and shot a look at her. Of course, I'm being serious. I have no intention of getting married anyway. Anastasia wasn't accustomed to telling lies and she was quite happy and content with the life she had with her son right now, so she found it pointless to add trouble to her peaceful life. Getting married didn't necessarily guarantee a blessed life and likewise, remaining single didn't mean that one's life would definitely be an unhappy one. If Jared also likes the guy who pursues you, then would you still maintain your stance of not getting married? Elliot continued to direct questions at her. Coincidentally, their car came to a stop in front of the traffic light, so he kept his piercing eyes on her. Instantly, Anastasia realized that the person Elliot was referring to was himself. She gulped and turned her head in the other direction to look out of the window. At the same time, she shook her head firmly. I don't plan to get married. I plan to raise Jared by myself. Suddenly, Elliot felt a sharp, stabbing pain in his heart upon hearing her words. She knows that I'm referring to myself and yet, she still insists on giving such a ruthless reply. Anastasia, could you consider things from another person's point of view? Don't keep hiding in your own world and avoid another's feelings, Elliot spoke through gritted teeth as he directed his deep eyes at her. He seemed to be extremely angry at the moment. Meanwhile, Anastasia turned her head to look at him. His current expression was exceptionally forbidding and his gaze was full of frustration. Elliot, you don't even know what I've been through and you don't know me at all, so don't you dare jump to conclusions about me. Anastasia was also slightly angered at that point and after finishing her sentence, she remained quite annoyed so she continued on her tirade. I told you this before. I don't need you to repay me for anything, so could you please suppress your feelings for me? Nothing will come out of this relationship. Stop the car. I want to get out of the car. Meanwhile, Elliot, who was holding onto the steering wheel, evidently tightened his step. There had never been any woman who could easily trigger his anger with just a few mere sentences. However, he didn't pull over. He continued to keep his eyes on the road and his anger suddenly dissipated as he calmly responded, I'll send you back to the office. At that point, Anastasia was stunned so she turned to look at him, who was currently busy driving by her side. She could feel the coldness and the distant feeling that came from within him, and she thought, 
Have I gone too far with my earlier sentence? Elliot, why don't you tell me about you and Haley? I would like to know more, Anastasia tried to change the topic. However, unexpectedly, she had hit a sore spot and this was a topic he had no intention of bringing up, so he coldly responded, I don't want to talk about it. In the end, Anastasia had no choice but to keep her mouth shut. She found Elliot quite unpredictable indeed. Chapter 178 By then they had arrived in front of the company, so Anastasia instantly voiced out, Why don't you pull over right here? I'll get down now, it was the peak hour during lunch, so she didn't want anyone to see her getting out of Elliot's car. Upon hearing that, Elliot pulled over and Anastasia quickly grabbed her bag and got out of the car in a rush. It was quite obvious that she was afraid of being seen by anyone else. Meanwhile, he continued to drive in the direction of the underground parking lot. As soon as Anastasia got back to the office, she received a phone call from Felicia saying that the client was quite pleased with her design, so there were no changes necessary. They could now proceed to send it to the factory to get it customized. Felicia had also confirmed with the client the details of it, such as the grade of the diamond preferred, so Anastasia felt quite relieved. At that moment, Grace walked in with her cell phone in hand and there was an excited look on her face. Anastasia, look at this. The news of President Pressgrave's treat of Musang King Durians from yesterday has gone viral. Furthermore, it's one of the top three trending topics. The title is The President of the Pressgrave Group Treated Their Staff to Musang King Durians. They are so fortunate. Meanwhile, Anastasia was significantly speechless. After all, it wasn't even a significant piece of news, but the media had deemed it important enough to publish it. The news published was in fact detrimental to Elliot, as it definitely reflected badly on his esteemed status. Right before work ended, Anastasia realized that it was time to go and pick Jared up from school. Suddenly, her landline rang and she subsequently picked up the phone. Hello, who's on the line? Come to the underground parking lot, an abrupt male voice rang out. At that instance, Anastasia hesitated for a few seconds before mentioning, President Pressgrave, there's no need to bother with this. I can go and pick Jared up by myself. I've hurt my finger too and I can't cook for you for the time being, so I would like to take a break for one week. Essentially, this meant that Anastasia didn't want to see the man for the coming week. Are you avoiding me? Elliot's voice deepened and it turned colder too. Anastasia wasn't one prone to self-deception, so she responded, Yes, from now on, we shouldn't meet up unless necessary. That would be the best for both of us. Goodbye. After Anastasia said that, she hung up the phone. Subsequently, she decided to go and pick Jared up. And so, she hailed a cab to his school and as soon as she entered the school compound, his teacher exclaimed in surprise, Oh, you're Jared's mother, right? Why are you here? Jared's father came and picked him up earlier. What? Anastasia was caught by surprise. Elliot came before me to pick up my son. What the heck is he doing? How can he do that? Darn it. At that point, Anastasia could only grab her cell phone and dial Elliot's number. Fortunately, he swiftly answered the phone. I picked Jared up and we're having dinner. Where are you taking my son to? Send him back home right now. Make your own arrangements for dinner. I'll sort out Jared's meal. After Elliot said that, he hung up immediately. Meanwhile, Anastasia was at a loss for words. He took off with my son and I'm not included? Gosh. Suddenly, she received a phone call from her father. Hi, Dad. Anastasia, are you free this Friday night? What's up? It's my company's 25th anniversary this Friday, and I would like to invite you and Jared along to join in the celebration. Sure, I'll take Jared along then. Anastasia was definitely attending it, so she agreed to the request. Great! Make sure to dress up nicely on Friday night. I'll introduce you to some of the company's management personnel. Okay, she replied. After she got off the phone with her father, Anastasia contemplated the situation. She was in fact quite reluctant to bring Jared along to such occasions, 
because Naomi and Erica would definitely be in attendance and she didn't want Jared to meet them. In the end, a lonely Anastasia ended up having a dinner of sandwiches by herself in a tiny restaurant. Each bite she took of her meal, she pretended as if she was biting into Elliot's flesh. How dare he take off with my son? How annoying. In the end, Anastasia got back home at about 7.3 p.m. and watched the clock tick by as she waited for Jared to arrive home. Meanwhile, her thoughts were filled with Elliot and she recalled everything that he had done to her. Suddenly, she felt her face gradually flush red. What's going on? Why do I keep thinking of that man? He's such a horrible and despicable person. At about 8.4 p.m., the doorbell sounded and she practically leaped up from the couch as she hurried to pull open the front door. On the doorsteps, Jared held Elliot's hand and the boy happily greeted her, Mommy, we're back. Chapter 179 Where have you guys been? Why are you back, Solite? Anastasia glared at Elliot angrily as he spoke meanwhile. The man couldn't help but smile. I brought Jared to get some dinner and then we went to an arcade nearby. Jared had a good time. Mommy, it's really fun. I want to go again. The boy was clearly quite drawn to the arcade and it was still on his mind. Okay, we can go there and have some fun next time when I'm free. Now, it's time to go back and freshen up. Then you need to get ready for bedtime. After Anastasia had said that, she turned to Elliot and voiced out, President Pressgrave, it's quite late now so I won't keep you any longer. You should go back. Mommy, couldn't you allow Mr. Pressgrave to come in and have something to drink? Jared suddenly felt that Anastasia was quite heartless to kick Elliot out just like that. Upon hearing that, Elliot chimed in as he didn't want to leave just yet. I won't stay on for too long. In response, Anastasia nodded after considering the fact that he had spent the night having fun with Jared. Okay, come on inside to have something to drink. Anastasia noticed the sweat on Jared's forehead, so she walked into his room to get his pajamas. Jared, let's get you ready for bed first, Mr. Pressgrave. I'll go and take a shower now. Go on, Elliot then sat on the couch. Anastasia's house wasn't exactly a mansion, but it was warm and cozy. He couldn't help wanting to stay on longer as it was very comfortable here. Meanwhile, Anastasia helped Jared freshen up, and she listened to him talk about the fun he had at the arcade. Furthermore, Elliot had allocated four bodyguards to keep a close eye on the boy, and he had done a great job at making sure of Jared's safety. Although Elliot had taken off with Jared without her permission today, Anastasia was surprisingly at ease with it and she wasn't worried about Jared being in Elliot's care. Since when did I develop this trust in him? Anastasia herself hadn't even realized this. After Jared was finally done in the shower and he had also washed his hair, he ran out dressed in his pajamas to Elliot's side. Holding a Rubik's Cube in his hand, he asked, Mr. Pressgrave, could you show me how to solve this? Elliot took the Rubik's Cube in his hand and the little cube suddenly seemed to come alive in his hands as his slender fingers deftly rotated it. His actions were quite elegant and dashing and into time, he had completed all six sides of the Rubik's Cube. Anastasia walked past while putting away some clothes, and she couldn't help silently applauding as she saw Elliot's speed at solving the Rubik's Cube. Indeed, this man is great in every aspect. If Jared interacts with him and learns from him, then perhaps he will turn out to be very smart too. Suddenly, Anastasia came to her senses. What sort of nonsense am I thinking about? I can't possibly hand Jared over to Elliot for him to bring up. Right on the dot at 9.3 p.m., Anastasia turned to Jared, who was sitting on the couch. Jared, look at the time. What are you supposed to be doing by now? She prompted. The boy then lifted his head to glance at the clock on the wall and puffed up his cheeks. Mommy, can I have another 10 minutes, please? No, it's time for you to read a bedtime story and then go to bed. Mr. Pressgrave needs to go home too. It's getting late now. Anastasia's main purpose was for Jared to stop bothering Elliot so that the man could leave. However, Jared glanced at Elliot with a torn look in his eyes. 
Mr. Pressgrave, I'll go to bed now. Go on then. It's great to get into the habit of maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Elliot praised Jared. In the end, Jared was elated with the encouragement and he happily went to his room. Anastasia went along with him and tucked him into bed. Subsequently, she adjusted the air conditioner temperature before shutting the door behind her. The man on the couch had unbuttoned the first three buttons on his shirt and his delicate collarbones were revealed. At the same time, Jared was not around, so Elliot's expression changed because right now, he could focus his eyes on the person he wanted to look at without any restraint. His primitive gaze was quite explicit. Let's have a chat. Truth was, Elliot wanted to continue the topic they hadn't quite finished in the car from earlier. He wanted to talk to Anastasia about her vow to remain single for the rest of her life because he was adamant to dispel that notion from her mind. Meanwhile, Anastasia saw that Jared had fallen asleep and she wanted to take a shower and turn in for the night, so she tittied up the living room and spoke without lifting her head. I'm not in the mood to chat. You should go home. Upon hearing that, Elliot narrowed his eyes. The light from the chandelier illuminated his figure and he seemed to exude a cold elegance from within. He looked like Prince Charming who had just come back from a ball. Can we talk about Jared's father? I would like to know more about him, Elliot suddenly commented in a low voice. Chapter 180 Wanasia suddenly paused in her action of wiping the table and her expression changed Slarati this was a topic that she didn't want to talk about either, so she rejected outright, I don't want to talk about that, it's all in the past. So you should be open about it and let it go. Jared's old enough now, so there's no need to be so fixated upon it, Elliot advised her. He thought that Anastasia's decision to remain single from now on was due to the hurt she had experienced in the past. On the other hand, Anastasia knew that he was just being kind and wanted to comfort her, but she didn't need that at all. She lifted her head and stared at him with clear eyes and she reminded him, President Pressgrave, it's quite late now. However, Elliot remained seated on the couch and he looked at her with a deep expression before placing his elbows on the armrest. He then nonchalantly tapped his long and slender index and middle finger on the couch, and he didn't seem to have the intention to leave at all. Elliot, it's nearly ten now. How long are you going to continue this? Anastasia could only urge him to leave. Doesn't he have to go home and get some sleep? At that point, he finally got up and then he purposely left his car keys on the couch. He then headed in the direction of the entrance before turning around to speak to Anastasia, who was in the living room, hand me my car keys please. Anastasia glanced at the car keys on the couch and she quickly grabbed them to bring them to the entrance, but he refused to take them from her too. In the end, she could only take a step out of the house and reached out to hand them to him. Suddenly, Elliot stretched his arm then she was dragged out of the doorway by him. Instantly after that, she was engulfed by a man's scent as a strapping figure approached her. At that moment, she could feel her body stiffen significantly. Anastasia lifted her head and her eyes met Elliot's smoldering look. The aggressiveness in his eyes was quite obvious too. Right after that, he leaned forward and pressed a steamy, hot kiss on her lips, and he didn't give her a chance to reject him at all as he pushed on aggressively. For a moment, Anastasia was quite breathless and slightly stunned from his prolonged, aggressive kiss. After she had come back to her senses, she tried to push him aside but at that point, Elliot placed his head against her forehead and his warm breath hit her cheek as he panted slightly. It is only now that I'm content enough to leave the place. Meanwhile, Anastasia angrily lifted her head to glare at him. So he's not content to leave without taking advantage of me? What's on his mind anyway? It seems to be full of obscene thoughts. Just leave. She shoved him hard and turned around to walk into her room. Subsequently, she slammed the door shut after her. At that moment, her heart thudded frantically and she could still taste him on her lips. I lote. She couldn't comprehend her feelings. What's up with me anyway? I don't seem to hate it and surprisingly it feels quite pleasant. Anastasia seemed to be in a daze and she quickly forced herself to dispel the thoughts in her mind. After that, 
she grabbed her clothes and went to take a shower. At the same time, she was adamant not to invite Elliot into her house from now on. After all, he was a beast who couldn't seem to keep his hands off her. He's so rich and it wouldn't take much effort for him to get any woman he's a fear, so why does he refuse to leave me alone? That night, Anastasia had trouble sleeping as she lay on her bed and her thoughts kept going to the kiss she had with Elliot by the door. At the same time, she realized that he was indeed a cunning person. He had purposely left his car keys on the couch to force her to bring them out for him. As such, he took advantage of the situation subsequently. How annoying. Undeniably though, he's really good at being provocative. One would find such a man hard to resist if the person didn't have a firm heart. However, Anastasia trusted that she could definitely resist the temptation and she wouldn't be affected by his provocations at all. Meanwhile, at the Tillman residence, Erica finally had something to do. She could finally prepare for the 25th anniversary of her father's company. On that day itself, she intended to dress up in a pretty dress and wow the crowd by being the most attractive person in attendance. This was a great chance for her to showcase herself and she definitely wouldn't let it go to waste. At that moment, Naomi was in her room and she was busy discussing with Frances the allowance for her attire for the event. She intended to get a stunning gown for Erica so that Frances' image could be upheld. Finally, Frances relented after her countless pleas and whines, and he decided to allocate an allowance of 200000 for the mother-daughter duo to doll up for the event. Naturally, Naomi found the amount insufficient, but it was good enough that she had managed to gain this amount from Frances. She decided that she would take Erica and pick a gown the next day as well as the day after that. After she had heard Francis mention that he had also invited Anastasia to the event, Naomi decided that she had to make sure that Anastasia didn't steal the show. Erica simply had to be the only star of the show. The next morning, Anastasia chatted with Jared about them attending the anniversary dinner as she sent him to school. Chapter 181 Mommy, I'll behave myself at home. You can go, the little guy meekly nodded. He disliked Erica as well, because he was able to feel her ill will toward him although he was but a little boy. Therefore, he chose to not tag along to prevent causing trouble for his mother. However, instead of having Grace to keep him company on that night like how Anastasia had suggested, Jared thought that Elliot might be a better candidate for the task. Anastasia went to the office after dropping her son off. She barely sat for a few minutes on her seat before Grace knocked on her door and pushed it open, inviting a flower delivery man to come in. This is Miss Tillman. Please send the flowers in. The bouquet of blue roses stunned Anastasia for a few seconds. Who sent this? Miss Tillman, here's your flowers. Do sign and acknowledge it. And so, Anastasia signed the paper. Then, she reached out for the card and the bouquet and flipped it open. Instead of finding romantic words, she found a domineering order written on it. Do not give the flowers away. You are sincerely, Pressgrave. Anastasia was rendered speechless. Why did he send me flowers again? He even prohibits me from giving it away. Miss Tillman, the flowers are gorgeous. They are obviously imported ones. Grace came over to admire the flowers. Upon hearing that, Anastasia pursed her lips and let out a helpless smile. I don't want to receive it no matter how pretty it is. Miss Tillman, your admirer must be super rich. Grace guessed in envy. He's not my admirer, Anastasia vaguely replied before she returned to her seat. In the next couple of hours, she intermittently stared at the bouquet of blue roses and fell into a daze. At 11.3 a.m., Nigel showed up at her office to invite her to lunch. It was an invitation that allowed no room for rejection. When he saw the bouquet of flowers on the couch, he instantly knew who the sender was. He felt frustrated with himself for being too busy with the renovation that he had forgotten about sending flowers. However, Anastasia was embarrassed to have him treat her to lunch every day, so she announced, let me treat you to lunch later. Nigel merely wanted to have a meal with her, so he didn't mind who would be paying the bill. In the end, they went to a western restaurant together. 
During the meal, he talked about his office renovation and asked Anastasia about her opinion. However, no matter what she suggested, Nigel agreed to all her ideas and decided to adopt them. As a result, she dared not give any hasty suggestions. Otherwise, she would be guilty if the renovation turned out awful. Anastasia, what do you think about my cousin? Nigel suddenly asked. Anastasia's hand trembled at the question, causing the spoonful of food that she scooped to fall back onto her plate. Uh, H, he's my boss and he's a nice person, of course, she stuttered. Between him and I, who do you think is better? Nigel stared at her intently, determined to get an answer out of her. At that, Anastasia put down her cutlery and looked straight into his eyes. Nigel, what exactly are you angling at? On the other hand, Nigel pursed his thin lips and decided that he shouldn't avoid the question he had been pondering any longer. And so, he exhaled and uttered, I know that he's pursuing you and he's repaying your kindness at the same time. Anastasia, in regards to our relationship, I hope that you can give me a chance to be with you, he lowered his head as he knew that chances were slim. Nigel, it's great to be your friend. We can have meals together and meet up sometimes. Besides, you know that I have no intention to remarry. I'm really sorry. She sincerely apologized, then added, Please don't waste your time on me, Nigel. It's not worth it, but you are the only woman in my heart. There is no one else. He raised his head and looked at the woman before him. Although she wasn't the most beautiful woman, she was the most unique view that he had ever gazed upon. Truth was, his words moved Anastasia's heart, but she remained straight-faced and sighed. In that case, I guess we can't even be friends. His expression stiffened and then fell. No, I don't want that to happen, therefore, let's remain as friends. However, Anastasia couldn't help feeling guilty when she said that. Seems like I have to avoid meeting up with Nigel too often after this. I don't want to ruin his life. Instead of wasting his time and effort on me, he should go and pursue other women. Chapter 182 Will you say the same if it's my cousin who pursued you? Nigel pouted and asked, feeling a little depressed. Something flashed across Anastasia's eyes at that question. Elliot was never an obedient gentleman like Nigel. Instead, he had a strong and overbearing character, somewhat like a bandit's. He would ignore her rejection and warnings. Upon seeing her reaction, Nigel couldn't help feeling jealous. It seems like she gives Elliot special treatment. In the end, she didn't answer his question and she muttered, After lunch, I have to return to the office for a meeting. You should go about your renovation. In the evening, Anastasia went to pick up her son before a certain someone did so. Otherwise, the child would be taken away by him yet again. This time, she successfully picked Jared up. She even brought him to the mall and had a stroll near her office. She also bought some dumplings home to cook. However, when she was buying them, the little boy kept asking her to buy more. Mommy, that's not enough. I want more, it's enough. In fact, it's more than enough for the two of us, she helplessly replied. No, it's not enough. He used a small ladle and continued filling the frozen dumplings into the bag. In the end, Anastasia brought a large bag of frozen dumplings home. As they were unable to finish them, she had to keep them in the fridge. After they reached home and while Anastasia was at the balcony, the boy took her phone. Finding Elliot's number, he sent the man a message. Mr. Pressgrave, come over to have some dumplings. All that was done quickly and easily. Sure. I'm on my way, Elliot replied. The boy put down the phone happily. As expected, Mr. Pressgrave will come. When Anastasia saw that it was getting late, she went to cook the dumplings. Mommy, you have to cook all the dumplings. The little boy reminded her it's too much. It's a waste if we can't finish them. I can finish them. I want to eat 50 dumplings. He announced loudly. You can't fill 50 of them in your little tummy. She chuckled as she said that. I can. He put on a straight face as he commented. Mommy, just cook them, all right. I'll cook the plates first, and I'll make some more if it's not enough, okay? She conceded with a smile. Okay, 
but don't forget to cook more if it's not enough. Mommy can cook more when Mr. Pressgrave is here, Jared thought. Thereafter, Anastasia went to the kitchen to cook some dumplings. Meanwhile, the little boy waited and stared at the door as he listened to the footsteps outside intently. Ten minutes later, Anastasia received a message on her phone. The boy quickly took a glance at it, opened the door giggled and immediately turned the door handle. Standing outside the door was none other than Elliot. The man was dressed like an elite who had just exited from a meeting room and he emanated the presence of someone powerful and influential. Mr. Pressgrave, we are having dumplings tonight, great, Elliot grinned. Anastasia, who exited the kitchen to get something from the fridge, was startled to see the man in the living room. W, why are you here? Her eyes widened in surprise. Mommy, I invited Mr. Pressgrave over to eat dumplings, the boy explained on behalf of Elliot, for fear that Anastasia would be mad. Anastasia narrowed her eyes. At that instant, the reason behind Jared's actions of insisting on getting extra dumplings and asking her to cook 50 of them dawned upon her. It turned out that her son had included Elliot's portion since the very beginning. Don't put him on the spot. I wanted to come myself, Elliot chimed in. There was nothing that Anastasia could do at that point since he had shown up. All right then. Since we have enough dumplings, looking at her son's large innocent eyes, she couldn't bring herself to scold him. It's a good thing that he took the initiative to think about others. It shows that he has become a more mature kid, she thought. Have a seat. I'll go and cook the dumplings after Anastasia said that. She returned to the kitchen. Subsequently, the first thing that came to Jared's mind was to ask for Elliot's permission. Mr. Pressgrave, Mommy is going to attend Grandpa's banquet tomorrow night. Can I go to your house to play? What's wrong? Won't she be taking you along? Elliot asked with a frown. Nope. Mommy said that it's not convenient for me to be there because there will be a lot of people. She is going to get Grace to look after me, but I want to spend time with you. Chapter 183 Sure, I'll go and pick you up tomorrow at school. Elliot was more than willing to take care of him, of course. Thereafter, Jared asked curiously, Mr. Pressgrave, will there be many men at the banquet? I'm worried that Grandpa may introduce other men to Mommy. I hope that you can be there at the banquet so that Grandpa can meet you too. Elliot narrowed his eyes. Could it be that Francis is going to find a partner for the woman at the banquet tomorrow? In that case, how can I miss that? At that instant, he thought of another suitable candidate who could take care of the kid. Jared, if I'm going to attend your grandpa's banquet tomorrow night, is it okay if I get Nigel to take care of you? But can we keep this a secret for now? Elliot didn't want his plan to be ruined, so he couldn't afford to let Anastasia and Nigel know about this. Okay, sure. It was obvious that the boy had now become Elliot's partner in crime. Little did the pitiful Nigel know that he would soon become the babysitter who helped his cousin to pursue Anastasia. Anastasia served two plates of dumplings at the table before she returned to the kitchen to make two more plates. Meanwhile, Elliot and Jared, who were sitting at the table, started dipping the dumplings into the pre-made sauce and eating them. Anastasia cooked all the dumplings that she had bought that day, and the portion happened to be just sufficient for the three of them. After the meal, Elliot took Jared downstairs to take a stroll while Anastasia cleaned the house. After she was done with the chores, she sat on the couch and fell into a daze. Why do I feel as though we are a family of three? She suddenly recalled that Elliot had slept with Haley before this, and Anastasia felt an indescribable feeling welling up inside her. She recalled how Haley had described their night together when Haley was hugging Elliot at the garden of the Pressgrave residence. She had talked about how wild Elliot had been above her. It was apparent that it had been an incredibly passionate night that had become one that was unforgettable to Haley. Anastasia shut her eyes abruptly, attempting to shrug off the thoughts that appeared in her head. It reminded her of the night five years ago that she had spent with a male escort that she had known nothing about. She did not know his name nor his face, although she had been completely conscious when everything had happened that night. She had felt that the male escort had a large and burly build, 
with strength so strong that she could hardly resist. He had lost his reasoning at that time, and he resembled a beast that had no sense of humanity at all. Whenever she remembered that night, Anastasia could feel her body tremble all over, and this incident caused her to bear a heartfelt disgust toward the carnal desire between a man and a woman. She refused to get married, not only because of the mental repulsion she felt toward such matters, but also because the incident had traumatized her physically. When Anastasia was engrossed in her painful memories, the sudden sound of the door being unlocked snapped her back to her senses. She inhaled a deep breath. You guys are back? Anastasia smiled at Jared, who was running into the house. When she saw her son's adorable and beautiful face, she could feel her earlier agony diminish. Mommy, this is for you. The boy came back carrying Anastasia's favorite beverage. You guys went out and bought something? She asked with a smile. I was thirsty, so Mr. Presgrave bought me a drink. I remembered that you like this, so I bought you a bottle. At that, Anastasia looked up at the tall man and thanked him. Thank you, mommy. I feel so hot. I want to take a shower. Okay, I'll help you to take a shower. Go and find yourself a set of pajamas. She looked at her son and he returned to his room. Just then, Anastasia looked at Elliot and said, President Presgrave, it's getting late. You should leave. The man's gaze landed on her face, his eyes beguiling as he murmured, I want to stay for a little longer. Do not think that you can take advantage of me. It won't happen again, she calmly announced. I won't fall for his tricks again. Elliot himself was aware that he couldn't possibly be so lucky to manage to lay hishans on her every time. However, at the thought that he would be able to see her the next day, he curled up the corner of his lips. See you tomorrow at the office then. With that, he pushed the door open and left the house. In the end, Anastasia exhaled in relief and quickly entered the room to help her son to shower. The next morning, the Department of Design had an early morning meeting. As Anastasia walked into the meeting room groggily, she abruptly saw a charming and noble figure sitting in the seat next to hers, and the usually noisy atmosphere in the office suddenly became particularly serious. Chapter 184 Elliot's Here Although all the female designers knew that Elliot was there for Anastasia, they still couldn't hold back their little gestures in hopes to catch his attention. The ladies flicked their hair and pursed their lips. Some tried to make eye contact with him, while others even attempted to undo a button at their low-cut collar to further expose their cleavage. When Anastasia took a seat, someone sent coffee into the room. Everyone was surprised that each of them got a cup of coffee, and it was Felicia who revealed the mystery. Everyone, let's thank President Presgrave for treating us to a cup of coffee. The lot of them looked at Elliot in gratitude. Some female designers even purred, Thank you, President Presgrave. I'm so happy. However, Elliot's gaze rested on the woman next to him, causing Anastasia to receive full attention from the crowd. The female employees suddenly felt that the coffee in their hands didn't taste as well as it had seconds ago because they now realized that Anastasia was the main reason they were able to drink the coffee in the first place. Meanwhile, Anastasia, who was skimming through the store sales analysis report, took a sip of coffee. This led a hint of smile to creep into the eyes of the man beside her. Everyone at the scene clearly took in his reaction. At present, the price war in the market is very intense. Our recent store sales have increased by 5% compared to the previous month. The company has decided to promote an associate director to supervise the entire department of design alongside me. Alice's eyes widened at that mention. She felt as though the position would have to belong to her and nobody could take it away from her. On the contrary, Anastasia, whose full attention was on design and nothing else, was uninterested with this management position. How much will the salary increment be when one is promoted to be an associate director? One of the designers went straight to the crux of matter. The person who is promoted to become the associate director shall have a salary increment of 5,000 to 10,000 on top of his or her original basic salary, depending on this person's capability, Felicia announced. 
Anastasia, who had been initially uninterested with the promotion, heard that, and her stunning eyes lit up and her interest was instantly piqued. What are the conditions that one must fulfill in order to be entitled for the promotion? Firstly, one must have worked with the company for more than five years. Secondly, we will review their design skills. Thirdly, one must possess a teamwork spirit, understand the market direction, and be able to analyze the market needs. The light in Anastasia's eyes dimmed when she heard that, while Alice, who was sitting opposite her, smiled and deliberately reminded her, Anastasia, you merely worked with the company for two months. You don't fit the first condition. Although Anastasia was disgruntled, she said nothing. Just then, a low yet firm male voice rang out beside her. Anastasia will be promoted as the associate director. Anastasia abruptly jerked her head toward him, but Elliot was seen looking at Felicia as he ordered, notify the human resource department about this. Felicia, who didn't expect the boss to promote Anastasia with just a statement, revealed an awkward smile. Sure, I'll notify the human resource department about the change in her position. At that, Alice, who was sitting opposite them, was so mad that her face blanched, while the other designers were astounded. Does Anastasia have such a powerful background? Could it be that the reason President Pressgrave attended the meeting today is just to promote her as the associate director in front of all of us? But that's unfair, President Pressgrave. Shouldn't other employees be given a fair chance? Alice boldly refuted. It will be difficult to convince the others if you make an exception and grant her a promotion like this. As soon as Alice voiced out her disapproval, the air in the meeting room instantly became heavy. Elliot furrowed his brows, darting a sharp gaze at her. Are you objecting to my decision? And no. I, I just think that T this is a company, and the company should have rules and regulations. Alice was so frightened that she started stammering and her face flushed crimson. Anastasia suddenly didn't find the position of the associate director attractive anymore. It would be all right if she earned the position with her own effort, but an exceptional promotion like this was indeed unfair to the others, let alone when she didn't want to owe the man any favors in the first place. President Pressgrave, I refuse to accept the position. Please allow Felicia to pick someone more suitable. Anastasia chimed in reasonably. Elliot's cold gaze that had initially been on Alice now landed on Anastasia, but there currently was a hint of frustration in them. Why is she concerned about all those irrelevant matters? Doesn't she want to earn more money? Let's do it this way then. Anastasia gains the right to compete for the position because her capability is undeniably outstanding. Alice, Anastasia, and Alexia are the suitable candidates for this position. I'll assign tasks to the three of you to assess your capabilities. Chapter 185 You guys can take it from here, Elliot calmly announced. It was apparent that he had no intention to participate in the meeting further, so he rose up from his seat and left. As soon as he had left, everyone in the meeting room exhaled in relief. The heavy atmosphere earlier had been suffocating. Anastasia, we will fight for the position in a fair and square manner. If you can beat me, I'll give you the position. Alice sneered. I don't need you to give it to me. Let's each do our best, Anastasia coldly refuted. Other than the three people whose names were called earlier, the others may leave. Felicia asked them to leave, as she wanted to have a private talk with the trio. In the task this time, all three of them would be responsible for one of the stores under the company. Whoever attained the best sales performance the next month would be crowned the champion. However, they were not allowed to request their friends or family members to make bulk orders. Only sales from free will customers would be taken into account. You three may liaise with the store managers, or you may take care of the store in person. Ultimately, the three of you have the right to do anything in the store. The total sales next month will be the deciding factor. All three of them, including Anastasia, blindly picked a store. Since she had decided to participate in the competition, she wouldn't give up that easily. Anastasia, I dare you to not rely on President Pressgrave's influence and compete with us fair and square. 
I would have accepted the position if I were to rely on his influence, no? Anastasia refuted. Anastasia, what in the world did you do to make President Presgrave treat you so differently? Could it be that you are hooking up with him? Alice sneered in disdain. Anastasia merely looked at the other woman coldly without saying a word. Upon hearing that, Felicia tried to make peace between them. All right, we are all colleagues. Please speak to each other politely. In the end, Alice tossed the documents on the table and announced, Anastasia, I won't lose to you. With that, she arrogantly left the scene. After Anastasia returned to her office, she received a call from her father. When Francis heard that she wouldn't be bringing her son along, he asked, Why aren't you bringing Jared? Dad, there are many people at the banquet. I'm worried that Jared would wander off. Besides, I've made arrangements for him, all right. Since you have made arrangements, just leave him at home then. Ever since the incident when Jared had been lost, Francis dared not show the slightest negligence when it came to the matter about the kid. And do remember to dress prettier, Francis reminded in the end. At that, Anastasia couldn't help but look down at what she was wearing that day. It was regular office attire, a gray blouse paired with a tight-fitting skirt, and she didn't prepare any other clothes. At noon, Anastasia had lunch with Felicia. The latter told her that the mold for the custom-made jewelry had been produced by the factory. What came next would be the craftspeople doing their jobs, and the final product would be completed by the end of the month. A sense of achievement bubbled up inside Anastasia upon hearing that. She, too, hoped to bring more profit to the company. At 3.0 p.m., Anastasia called Grace over to her office. She instructed her to help her to look after Jared, to which Grace happily agreed. At 4.5 p.m., Anastasia took Grace to the kindergarten to pick up her son. The moment she stepped into the classroom, the young female teacher asked in surprise, Miss Tillman, why are you here? Jared has been picked up by his father. Anastasia's heart skipped a beat and she asked, are you sure that it was his father who picked him up? The female teacher was certain. Yes, it was his father who came in person to pick him up. I see. Thank you, Anastasia felt annoyed at that. Why did Elliot pick my son up without informing me? Miss Tillman, what does Jared's father do? Grace immediately asked curiously. Uh, he's in the finance industry. Wow, that's so cool. I wish to see what Jared's father looks like someday. Jared is so good looking, so I reckon that his dad must be very handsome. Anastasia's face flushed red as she explained, he's a busy man, so you won't be able to see him most of the time. After she said that, she added, Grace, I won't be troubling you tonight then. You may get off work. Grace nodded, feeling a little sad that she wouldn't be caring for the kid that night. As Anastasia walked toward the road to hail a cab, she dialed a man's number. The call went through. Hello, Elliot, where did you take my son to? Jared told me that you will be attending your father's company banquet tonight. Since you won't have the time to take care of him, you can just leave him in my care. Chapter 186 Anastasia didn't expect that her son would tell Elliot about the banquet. Since things had come to that point, she had no choice but to trouble the man with taking care of Jared. And so, she immediately replaced her initially angry tone with her usual one. If it's not too much of a hassle to you, please take care of him for me tonight. I'll go and pick him up at around 9.0 p.m. Sure, Elliot unhesitatingly agreed and hung up the call. Gazing at the sunset in the distance, Anastasia fell into a daze, wondering whether it was a good thing that her son relied on Elliot so much. Oftentimes, the choices available were limited. On one hand, she didn't want Jared to depend on that man too much, but on the other hand, she couldn't help feeling relieved when the man took care of her son. In fact, she even trusted that man unconditionally. After Elliot ended the call with Anastasia, he instantly called another person. Hello, Elliot. How can I help you? Nigel's voice rang from the other end of the call. Although the two men had made a bet, it didn't affect the relationship between them. I need a favor from you. Will you help me to take care of a child? Whose child? Where are you? Where else? 
my father's company, of course, all right, I'll send him over right now, you haven't told me whose kid is that, and I don't like to babysit, Nigel grumbled, it's Anastasia's boy, are you not going to babysit him, Elliot muttered in exasperation, what, Jared, Jared's with you now, Nigel asked in surprise, then he rejoiced, send him over, I don't like other kids, but Jared's different, Elliot ended the call on his Bluetooth earpiece before he said to the kid in the back seat, I'm sending you to Nigel's place now, all right? Okay, Mr. Pressgrave, you have to keep an eye on mommy tonight and make sure that no man snatches her away. I'll certainly keep a close eye on her, Elliot chuckled. No man would be able to take her away under his watch. Soon, they arrived at a seven-star hotel, and Nigel was waiting downstairs to get the kid. When the car came to a stop, Nigel pulled open the car door of the back seat. He was surprised when he saw a child car seat in Elliot's car and the little boy was safely strapped on the seat. Mr. Nigel, Jared politely greeted him. Meanwhile, Elliot walked up to Nigel and said, Anastasia is tied up with something, so she asked me to send Jared to your place. I'll have to trouble you with him tonight. Upon hearing that, Nigel felt a little displeased. I would go and pick Jared up if Anastasia gave me a call, so why did she get Elliot to send Jared over? Could it be that in her heart, I'm not as reliable as Elliot? Goodbye, Mr. Pressgrave, as Jared held Nigel's hand. The boy looked behind and winked at Elliot, hinting the latter about the secret that only the two of them knew. Came the end, Nigel led Jared to his office. The more the former thought about it, the more frustrated he felt. Instead of asking Elliot to send Jared over to me, why didn't Anastasia contact me directly to go and pick Jared up? Nigel turned to look at the little guy who was sitting on the couch with his little feet dangling in the air. Suddenly, Nigel noticed that Jared's beautiful facial features had started to become sharp, which caused the man to widen his almond-shaped eyes. What's going on? Why do I find that Jared seems to look a little like Elliot? Jared's features and demeanor were very similar to Elliot's. The next instant, Nigel seemed to recall something, and he took out his phone to scroll through his photo album. He remembered that he had kept a photo of Elliot as a child. It was a photo that had been taken when he was with Elliot. After searching through a few albums, Nigel finally found the photo. Nigel looked at the little boy in the photo who had his arms around Nigel's shoulder. At that point, Nigel's eyes nearly fell out of his sockets. In the photo, Elliot was a five-year-old kid and he looked exactly like the little boy who was currently sitting on the couch. They had faces so similar that one seemed to be a duplicate of the other. What kind of strange phenomenon is this? Anastasia's son looks exactly the same as Elliot when he was a kid. Nigel looked at himself in the photo, at the boy who had Elliot's arm around his shoulder. Although he had been an adorable kid as well, he had looked nothing like Jared. At that moment, Nigel felt as though he was burning in rage and jealousy. Is this a hint from God? That Elliot is going to beat me in this relationship? Nigel glanced at the kid on the couch again, and the love he had for Anastasia was still strong. If I were to marry Anastasia, I wouldn't ever make the little guy sad, nor would I give him any younger brothers or sisters. Chapter 187 Jared, where did your mommy go? Mommy has something else to do, and so, Nigel came to the conclusion that Anastasia had to work overtime, so she had brought Jared to the office, then had Elliot send Jared over to him. Nigel was certain that that was the truth. At that moment, Anastasia was in a cab on the way to the hotel where her father's company event would be held. Her father's company wasn't exactly a large establishment, so the celebration this time was organized in a regular five-star hotel. The attendees of the event were not required to go through the hassle of registration before entering the venue. Anastasia saw a sign at the lobby that stated, Attendees Oftelman Constructions Banquet, please proceed to the third floor. As soon as Anastasia exited from the lift, she followed the sign and arrived at a hall that was decorated with numerous tables and chairs. She saw her father standing among a few elderly men, 
and he looked radiant as he beamed gleefully. He seemed to be in high spirits as he raised his glass and chatted with the people around him. Dad, Anastasia walked up to him and greeted him. Hey, this is my elder daughter, Anastasia. Upon seeing her, Francis introduced her to his peers standing around him. One of them couldn't help but compliment, Tillman, you are so lucky to have such a gorgeous daughter. Not only does she have the looks, I heard that she is quite a capable lady as well, another man praised. Anastasia felt embarrassed upon hearing that. It seemed like her father had often mentioned her in front of his friends. Still, she was glad that she made her father proud. Good evening, she smiled and greeted them. Meanwhile, Francis was surveying the hall, seemingly looking for someone. Just then, a vigorous young man in a suit entered the hall, and Francis immediately called out to him, Alex, come here, Alex Hunter was about 28 or 29 years old, definitely below his 30s. Currently, he was emanating the youthful vibe of a young man. Upon hearing his boss summon, he quickly strode over. At that instant, he saw Anastasia, who turned to face him, and he was completely in awe. Anastasia appraised him with her stunning eyes. This man must be dad's employee. Anastasia, let me introduce you to him. This is Alex Hunter, a recently promoted finance manager of our firm. He's young and capable, and he's a graduate from a renowned university, Francis commended, his eyes full of compliments. Anastasia greeted him with a smile. Hello, Mr. Hunter. Alex ruffled his hair in embarrassment. You must be Miss Tillman. It's nice to finally meet you in person. President Tillman mentions you often. Alex, this is my elder daughter, Anastasia. I've always wanted to introduce you to each other. Please take good care of her on my behalf tonight, Francis chimed in. It was apparent from his gaze that he had other plans. Alex was both surprised and excited. At that point, he seemed a little flustered as he was afraid that he would offend or upset Anastasia. Miss Tillman, do you want to drink anything? On the contrary, Anastasia remained calm and composed. She accompanied Alex to a table and smiled at him. Mr. Hunter, I'll help myself. You should go about with your things. Alex was personally trained by Francis to be his right-hand man. The latter even handed Alex the power over the most important department, which was the finance department. That night, Francis had the intention to set up Alex and his elder daughter, Anastasia. When Anastasia took over the company in the future, it would be much easier for her with Alex as her husband. Francis had been cracking his head to keep his large business going when he had no son. Hence, the best way was to make Alex his son-in-law. Miss Tillman, I've often heard your father mentioning you. He said that you are a jewelry designer of a jewelry atelier. You are such a talented young woman, Alex seemed embarrassed, but he was eager to present himself before the woman he had fallen for at first sight. I'm just a designer. You are the one who is amazing. Anastasia praised him. He was a valuable employee of her father, so she naturally treated him politely. You are flattering me, Miss Tillman. President Tillman thinks well of me, so he gave me the position, Alex replied humbly. Anastasia then turned to survey the other guests, but Alex couldn't help but gaze fixedly at her. Her every movement seemed to capture his heart. It seemed that he had really fallen for Anastasia at first sight. Sight. Chapter 188 Alex was well aware of the fact that Anastasia most likely would be Francis' successor in the future. Truth was, Alex had his own thoughts as well. After all, everyone in the world would dream of having an casual life. Meanwhile, Anastasia was borked, so she took out her phone to check her messages while Alex went to get her some snacks. He had made up his mind to stick with Anastasia no matter where she was that night. She was curious about what her son was doing at that moment, so she sent Elliot a text. What's Jared doing? After she sent the message, she didn't receive any reply even after waiting for more than 10 minutes, so she thought that the man must have missed her message. Just then, a mother-daughter duo hurried into the hotel lobby. It was none other than Naomi and Erica, who had just arrived due to the terrible traffic. 
Erica wore a burgundy evening gown that night. As she entered the hall while lifting her skirt, she suddenly thought of something and turned to her mother. Mom, I left my phone in the car. Could you go and get it for me? Upon hearing that, Naomi agreed resignedly. You go sit on that couch for a while. I'll go get you your phone now. Don't play with your phone all the time in the car in future. And so, Erica lifted her skirt and took a seat on the couch while waiting for her mother. At that moment, a black vehicle stopped at the main entrance of the hotel. Under the light from the hallway, a man pushed open the car door of the back seat and alighted from the car. Standing at six feet two, he had an imposing bearing. After tidying his suit, he strode into the hotel with his long slender legs. He had Ray following by his side carrying his briefcase. However, Ray, who was also a handsome, white-collared elite, seemed inconspicuous as he stood next to Elliot. When Erica was staring at the door waiting for her mother to get her phone, she suddenly spotted the man and her heart started pounding wildly. Oh God! How can there be such a dashing, elegant man in this world? The man who entered the premises under the bright lights had a cold and noble bearing. Dressed in a fitted suit, he emanated a stern yet intimidating aura that made it obvious he was someone with a high and mighty position. Erica's heart nearly jumped out of her chest. He's so handsome and sexy. Elliot's gaze swept across the signboard and he saw that the banquet of Tillman Construction was held on the third floor. He then entered the elevator together with Ray and pressed on the button to the third floor. Upon seeing that the lift stopped at the third floor, Erica couldn't help but hold her chest excitedly. Could it be that the man is here to attend Dad's company event? Does this mean that I have the chance to get to know him? Erica was exhilarated and she felt as if she had met the love of her life. She wanted to know him very badly, and she had even thought about the names for their future kids. When Naomi saw Erica staring at the elevator in a daze, she called out to her, Erica, what are you staring at? Mom, I just saw a super handsome man. He seems to be heading to dad's company event. I want to get to know him. I have to know him. Upon seeing how crazy her daughter was for that man, Naomi thought to herself, a handsome face will be useless if he's poor. I won't agree for my daughter to marry a poor man or even a man with an ordinary background. My daughter has to marry the wealthiest man. Meanwhile, Elliot stepped out of the elevator and into the hall. At one glance, he spotted Anastasia, as well as the existence of a man beside her. That man was chatting with her, while she had one hand on her chin and a curve at the corner of her lips. She looked as though she was having a great time. Elliot narrowed his eyes menacingly. As expected, this woman attracts the gaze of men no matter where she goes. Upon seeing Francis among the crowd, Elliot walked up to him. Francis was chatting with his friends when he suddenly heard a pleasant male voice beside him. Hello, Mr. Tillman. Francis turned to look at him and was stunned for a few seconds. And you are? Ray immediately handed him Elliot's business card. This is President Pressgrave's business card. Please have a look. Francis took the name card before he glanced at it and his pupils dilated at that instant. He then stared at the young man before him in disbelief. Is he the young master of the Pressgrave family whom my ex-wife sacrificed herself to rescue back then? Chapter 189 With Elliot's powerful status in the business world, as well as the influence of the Pressgrave family, Francis instantly welcomed him excitedly. Young Master Pressgrave, you actually have the time to join us. It's an honor to have you here. Although his wife had saved him, Francis still viewed this man as a powerful figure that he couldn't afford to offend or mess with. Mr. Tillman, you are being too courteous. I heard that today is the celebration for your company's 20th anniversary. I hope that you will forgive me for coming uninvited. You are overthinking it. I'm really glad that you can come, young Master Pressgrave. I'm really excited, in fact. Francis was genuinely delighted, and his companions were equally astonished as well none of them had expected to see the legendary mysterious head of the Pressgrave family at Francis' company celebration.
Mr. Tillman, I reckon that you don't know that President Pressgrave is the employer of your daughter, Miss Anastasia. What? Anastasia is working in President Pressgrave's company. Francis initially didn't know how he should entertain the young master of the Pressgrave family, but now that he knew that his daughter worked for Elliot, he thought that it would be a great idea to have her accompany him. Meanwhile, Anastasia was sitting in the hall chatting with Alex about her father's company's recent affairs. Alex was telling her everything that he knew, while Anastasia listened to him attentively. Suddenly, she heard her father calling for her. Anastasia, Anastasia, come over. She inadvertently looked up in her father's direction. She saw her father at first, but her eyes soon met another man's pair of cold, piercing eyes. Although there was a distance between them, the man's gaze resembled a deadly sharp blade when he peered at her. If the gaze were to land on someone else, this person would be scared out of their wits. However, upon seeing the noble man next to her father, not only was Anastasia not afraid, she was even enraged. Didn't he say that he would take care of Jared? Why is he here at dad's company event? How about my son? In the end, she pulled her chair back and headed over to her father. Anastasia, come here. We have an honorable guest. Please help me to entertain young Master Pressgrave. Francis waved at her to gesture at her to come over. When Anastasia stood in front of her father, she immediately calmed down as she didn't want her father to know about her relationship with Elliot. Hello, President Pressgrave. Welcome to my father's company event. She held her hand out in a distant yet polite manner. Elliot extended his hand to hold hers, an unfathomable smile playing by his lips. Dad, let me entertain President Pressgrave. You should go about with your business. President Pressgrave, this way please. She gestured at Elliot to come with her. Elliot raised his head and looked in front. He was currently heading in the direction of the VIP tables while Anastasia followed behind him. When she gauged that her father wouldn't be able to hear their conversation from where they were now, she anxiously asked, where's Jared? Elliot looked back and responded, don't worry, I've handed him to Nigel, why are you here at my father's company event? She asked, staring at his back. To congratulate him, of course, the man curved up the corner of his lips and he turned around to look at her. At that moment, the two of them had arrived at the table. Elliot pulled the chair back and took a seat, while Anastasia sat down beside him, a look of frustration on her face. Your arrival gave my father a fright. You were not supposed to show up here with your identity. She glared at him helplessly. What identity should I show up with then? How about his elder daughter's boyfriend? Elliot asked with a charming smile. Anastasia nearly jumped to her feet as she denied in a fluster, stop talking nonsense, TM not here as a mere guest. I would like to talk to your father about a business project, he raised his brow at her. Of course, he wouldn't come over for nothing. Anastasia was stunned to hear that. Any random project that Elliot had in his hands would allow her father to make a profit for at least a few years to come. However, Elliot's true intention was to repay kindness, and she didn't wish to see her father interact with him too much. Just then, Erica entered the hall holding her mother's arm while gazing around anxiously. Suddenly, she took notice of the handsome charming figure at the first table from the left in front of the stage. Although she only saw his back, it was enough to make her heart race. Soon, she noticed a familiar figure sitting next to that man. At that instant, jealousy and anger started raging inside her. Isn't that Anastasia? Chapter 190 She actually hooked up with that hot man ahead of me. This won't do. I cannot allow Anastasia to snatch away the man I have my eyes on. Mom, that's the man. Do go and ask Dad who he is. Erica pointed at where Elliot was. Naomi raised her eyes and looked in that direction. It was the figure of a young man, and he seemed tall and decent from his back, so he should have handsome looks. Therefore, Naomi held Erica's arm and headed toward her husband. After greeting him, she dragged Francis to one side and asked, Francis, who's that guest? She pointed in the direction of Elliot. Francis laughed. He's the young master of the Pressgrave family, 
the most honorable guest tonight, the young master of the Pressgrave family? Which Pressgrave family? Asked Naomi in puzzlement. She was unfamiliar with the people of the business world. Which else? Their company is situated in the tallest office building in the city center. Don't you always see it when you go shopping? Francis explained Elliot's identity in the simplest and easiest manner. At that instant, Naomi and Erica exchanged glances. They instantaneously understood who he was referring to. After all, that building was a landmark, the most iconic structure at the city center. Oh God, the Pressgrave Corporation belongs to him? He's super rich. His wealth is on par with a nation's. His company is in global business. Francis exclaimed, Mom, I have to get to know him. I have to get to know young Master Pressgrave. Erica was so excited that she nearly went crazy. Never in a million years did she think that she would meet the president of the Pressgrave Corporation at her father's company event. Just then, Naomi narrowed her eyes in displeasure. Is that Anastasia accompanying young Master Pressgrave? Why is she with him? I just found out that Anastasia actually works in a jewelry company under young Master Pressgrave, so I asked her to entertain him, Francis replied. Dad, why didn't you ask me to entertain him instead? I'm your daughter too. Erica immediately felt jealous of Anastasia. Did Dad intentionally give Anastasia a chance to spend time with young Master Pressgrave? Ask you to go? What can you talk to him about? Even I myself don't know how I should entertain him, Francis reprimanded helplessly. It was fortunate that his elder daughter could entertain the guest on his behalf. Truth was, Francis had glanced in that direction a few times and found that Anastasia seemed to be getting along well with Elliot. However, nobody knew what they were actually talking about. In fact, nobody could guess how displeased Anastasia was with Elliot's presence. She was currently persuading him to leave if he had no other business there. Unfortunately, the thick-skinned man insisted on staying. I'll tell my father that you have to leave because of something urgent. He won't blame you for that, she urged. Miss Tillman, are you driving away your father's guest? If you continue to try to drive me out, I'll complain to your father and have him uphold justice. The man elegantly held a teacup and took a sip of the tea that he disliked. Anastasia bit her red lips. Elliot, I'm begging you. Stop repaying my dad. He doesn't know that you are actually repaying kindness, so it won't be fair to him. Anastasia, let me tell you something. Someone has their eyes on your father's business. They are trying to carry out their plan of acquiring a few small-scaled construction material companies and your father's firm is one of them. Do you still think that I shouldn't help out your father now? He leaned in and whispered at her. Anastasia was startled by the news. She raised her head and looked into the man's serious eyes that suggested that what he had said was not a lie. Are you serious? She asked. The industry of construction material has always been a profitable industry. Besides, there will always be investors wherever there is profit, he nonchalantly commented. Anastasia was stunned to hear that. She knew that the business world was always treacherous with a set of harsh survival rules, but she never thought that it would happen to her father. At present, someone was looking at her with a disappointed gaze from a distance not far away from them. After barely getting to know her, Alex found that Anastasia had an outstanding man by her side. He had just heard from the others that the man who looked even younger than him was actually Elliot Pressgrave, the high and mighty leader of the Pressgrave Corporation. Chapter 191 Even though Alex self-admittingly thought that he was an outstanding individual, he knew he did not hold a candle to Elliot. Hailing from a poor background, Alex always acknowledged that the world wasn't fair. He had sacrificed a lot to reach the top, but some people were simply born up at the very top. Anastasia was a girl that he liked the first moment he laid eyes on her, and she made him feel intoxicated through the short conversation they had. With every breath and smile that she took, it served only to make him fall for her deeper and deeper. Yet at that moment, Alex could only look on, clenching his fists as the one he loved was by Elliot's side. Failing to make Elliot budge, Anastasia was about to give up when a middle-aged woman's voice called to her, 
Oh, Anastasia, there you are. Come help me out for a bit. What Anastasia saw was Naomi had a kind and warm smile at that moment, something the former didn't see every day. Is there anything you need help with? Anastasia asked as Elliot also turned over to look at Naomi. Upon seeing his face, Naomi felt her heart actually skipped a bit over how perfect the man's face was. The only flaw was the distant and cold aura he emanated that made him feel like an invisible barrier was surrounding him. And this must be the honorable guest your father mentioned, young Master Elliot. Hastily, Naomi greeted him, Hello, young Master Elliot. I'm Francis' wife, Naomi Lowell. I hope you'll find it in your heart to forgive us if there's anything inadequate at the venue. To this, Elliot only returned a subtle nod, thinking back on how the mother-daughter duo bullied Anastasia back then at the company, he wouldn't even have upheld common courtesy if not for the celebration taking place right then. Anastasia, come with me for a second. I have something urgent that could use your help, Naomi announced, pretending to look like something urgent was going on. Since it was her father's company celebration today, Anastasia didn't want to slack a either, so she said to Elliot, President Pressgrave, I'll be stepping away for a bit. Please make yourself comfortable, Stating that, Anastasia then stood up and left. At the instant Naomi turned around, the older woman quickly hinted at her daughter. The actual reason Naomi came was just to make Anastasia leave so that a chance could open up for her daughter, as Elliot was their real target for tonight. Meanwhile, Erica, who was standing not far away, saw her mother's hint. Immediately, she became anxious and excited, Wanting to run right to Elliot's side using the mirror at the side, she looked at herself for a few seconds before purposefully lowering her neckline and pushing her chest up, thereafter walking toward him seductively. Upon closing in on him, Erica could feel her breath being taken away as she looked at the man's sharp silhouette. With every look at his clean-cut sideburns and his stunning side profile, she was falling deeper for the charismatic man. After a deep breath, she mustered up the sweetest tone she could and said, Hello, young Master Elliot, since my sister is busy with something else, my father asked me to accompany you for a bit. Saying that, Erica naturally sat on Anastasia's seat. Her brain instantly turned into mush the second she made eye contact with Elliot, and she did not know what to say next. At that moment, Erica who wanted to transform into a princess just to show him her most elegant side, was unaware that the man sitting in front of her had witnessed the fight between her and Anastasia a month ago. I don't need any company, thank you. Finishing his sentence, Elliot then picked up his phone and began scrolling through it, all the while emitting a distant feel. What about some drinks, young master Elliot? I can bring you some, if you so wish. There's no need, fruits? There's some freshly cut fruits there. I can know Elliot cut her off without even moving his gaze away from his phone. Even though Erica knew that Elliot was hard to approach and cold, she wasn't just giving up yet, as she was satisfied by just staying close to him. In that case, I'll just stay here with you. Do let me know if you have any needs. Propping up her chin, she looked at him, her expression love-struck. As Elliot couldn't make her go away, he just left such a love-struck looking person be. On the other side, Anastasia, who was called to the pantry, was a bit puzzled as no help was actually needed. There were even a few workers who could be seen sitting down and chatting. Chapter 192 What is there to help out with? Anastasia, help me take a look if the amount of wine here is correct or not. As you know, the employees in hotels can have less than desirable habits sometimes, Naomi's loud voice attracted the ire of nearby waiters. Feeling extremely humiliated, Anastasia wished she wasn't acquainted with the woman. In the end, she said calmly, this is a five-star hotel, so no such thing would happen. Now, if there isn't anything else, then I'll be excusing myself first, after that, Anastasia was going to open the door and go out, but Naomi made a move to grab onto her. Wait, Anastasia, I have something to say to you. Feeling slightly disgusted, 
Anastasia avoided her touch. You can say whatever you want to without having to touch me. Anastasia, you know that Erica has also bought a house recently, right? After your dad bought one for you, he insisted on buying one for her too. I couldn't even persuade him not to do so, Naomi said frustratingly. Smirking deep down, Anastasia kept up a calm fod as she countered, that's between you people. You don't need to tell me that, of course I have to tell you that. Do you know how hard it is for your father to be the sole breadwinner of the family? On top of that, the company isn't going through its best period recently, so don't disturb him if you don't have much going on. Also, don't try to borrow money from him these days. Just try to spend within your means. Everything that Naomi said pointed to one message Anastasia had better not further spend any of Francis' money. Even if Naomi did not state this, Anastasia knew all this herself. Your dad hasn't been sleeping all that well these nights. I think it might be due to the stress. The guilt started to well up within Anastasia, as the house that her dad bought for her did cost a pretty penny. Maybe dad really is quite stressed nowadays. Anastasia, I heard from your father that you're now working under young master Elliot, right? Could I trouble you to ask if he's still hiring? Erica is also hoping to land a job in his company, Naomi immediately murmured. Upon hearing that, Anastasia sneered deep down as she could see right through Naomi's little trick. I think she just wants Erica to get close to Elliot. With that thought, she then opened the door and looked to the great hall. As expected, Erica had already made herself comfortable on Anastasia's original seat beside Elliot. Anastasia then realized that Naomi was just calling her away as a distraction. And so, the former opened the door fully and left. Hey, Anastasia, I haven't even finished yet. Do you have any manners? I'm your senior. You should be respecting me. Behind her, Naomi was so livid she started to stomp her foot at that point. Practically all the guests had arrived, with Elliot's table being the only one that had just one person sitting at it. This was probably because nobody dared to sit there. Weaving through the various tables, Anastasia was making her way back when another voice called out to her. Miss Tillman, can I have the honor of sitting with you? Turning back, she saw that it was Alex, so she instantly smiled and replied, Of course you can. Let's go over to that table, gleefully. He nodded and followed Anastasia to Elliot's table. Seeing how Anastasia was coming over, Erica could not help the hint of revolt that flashed across her gaze as she thought that a high and mighty man like Elliot wouldn't even spare an extra glance at Anastasia like he did to herself. Hearing the footsteps, Elliot finally drew his gaze from his phone. He coincidentally saw Anastasia sitting down together with a man opposite him. It was the same man that was chatting happily along with her just now. President Pressgrave, this is Mr. Alex Hunter. He's responsible for the financial department in my dad's company. Then, she continued, and this is my company's boss, Mr. Elliot Pressgrave. Hello, Mr. Pressgrave, Alex courteously greeted. Hello, raising his eyebrows slightly, Elliot gave off a feeling of a successful man that nobody at the venue could match up to. Anastasia, have you seen Mr. Pressgrave at the company before? Erica asked smilingly as she thought that a normal employee wouldn't have any chances to catch a glimpse of the boss. Anastasia sneered in response. President Pressgrave is extremely busy. How would I be able to see him? Meanwhile, Elliot was looking at Anastasia with his deep gaze as she spun tails. At that instant, he could not help the loving smile that played on his lips. Chapter 193 Anastasia, why didn't you bring your son along? Erica immediately exposed the fact that Anastasia had a son. Bluntly, the latter replied, You don't have to worry about that. My son is being taken care of just fine. President Pressgrave, do you know that my sister has a kid? He's already four now. It was quite tough on her, having to raise him all on her own. At that point, Erica wanted to just spill the fact that Anastasia was a single mother. Since Alex already knew that Anastasia had a child, he thought that he stood a better chance at being with her due to a single mother's lowered standard in choosing her partner. 
In turn, Anastasia only smirked while looking at Erica's little show. On the other hand, Erica kept thinking that Elliot would ask her something out of sheer curiosity. Never in a million years did she think that he wouldn't care about this at all, with him not even listening to her. Coughing awkwardly, she then kept quiet. Meanwhile, Alex was trying to find a topic to chat with Anastasia, so he asked, Miss Tillman, you said that you wanted a tour of the company, right? When are you free? I'd love to bring you around. When facing Alex, Anastasia always smiled politely back. This made a certain man feel jealous inside, as she did not even smile at him like that from the start. The only things that she showed him were her temper, stubbornness, and willfulness, all of which were bad sides. But now, she actually left her best smile, sweetest voice, and best side of her to a stranger that she just met. All right then, I'll contact you if I'm ever in dad's company, Anastasia then proceeded to exchange numbers with Alex. Sure thing. Happiness was written all over Alex's face when he said that. Anastasia's gaze then met with a chilling, upset one, and her smile froze in place before disappearing altogether. In the end, she picked up her goblet and averted her gaze. At that moment, Francis brought a few of his friends over to the table, and he said to Anastasia as soon as he came over, Anastasia, why are you sitting here? Quickly now, go and sit beside President Pressgrave. Left with no choice, Anastasia could only relocate her seat beside Elliot's. Now, Elliot was surrounded by both of Francis' daughters. Hurriedly, Alex also switched seats and sat beside Anastasia. President Pressgrave, I'm sorry for this lack of proper treatment. Please, if you have anything, just order Anastasia to do it for you. I will be sure to do so, Mr. Tillman. Smiling, Elliot exuded the aura of an elitist. Remembering something, Anastasia stood up and walked to her father's side, whispering, Dad, when you're giving the speech later, be sure to not expose President Pressgrave's identity. He wants to keep a low profile. I understand, Francis nodded. And so, Anastasia returned to her seat. Before long, Francis was invited on stage by the host. After he somewhat excitedly drank a big gulp from a can of beer and adjusted his suit, he went up to the stage. Looking at how happy her father was, Anastasia was very calm inside as she clapped and looked admiringly at him speaking excitedly on stage. On the other hand, Elliot gave a stretch and looked between the woman beside him and Francis. At that moment, Elliot could feel the charm of what family was due to the obvious love Anastasia showed for her father. On stage, Francis did not mention Elliot's real identity. If his daughter did not tell him to do so, he would have given Elliot a grand introduction. After Francis' speech, it was time for the banquet to start. Because Francis himself was in the blue-collar field, his guests tonight were all his employees and they occupied over 50 tables. The scene was very lively, even though it did not match the elegance of the upper society. Everybody just wanted to fill their stomachs and drink until they dropped. In short, having a good night was their only aim. When Francis was still on stage, someone even requested that he sing a song, so in a state of being forced and submitting to it, he decided to sing a classic to help liven up the atmosphere even further. Francis even sang with great vigor. Off stage, Anastasia had been howling with laughter at this scene, and she alternated between covering her mouth and giving her father a thumbs up. Seeing how his daughter loved listening to him sing, Francis put in even more effort. Chapter 194 Fewer BYD narrowed his eyes as he had never felt this kind of atmosphere before. The woman's sweet smile became his view, and her happiness directly affected him as he became very happy too. Erica had caught Elliot looking at Anastasia a few times, and this made the former green with envy. So, she also intentionally laughed out loud, yet she failed to elicit a response from him. Sitting off to the side, Alex carefully hid his love for Anastasia as he knew that Elliot also liked her very much, judging from the man's gaze. After singing, Francis got back to the table and immediately raised his glass to toast Elliot. Young Master Elliot, 
I'll toast you on behalf of me lacking as a host. Quickly, Elliot stood up to reciprocate his toast. You're too kind, Mr. Tillman. Upon seeing Francis down his glass entirely, Elliot, whose glass was also filled with beer, did the same and finished it too. Anastasia, quickly refill the president's glass. Make it full, said Francis. However, Erica, who was beside them, had a bottle of red wine ready. Let me pour it, Dad. Not in the mood to argue over this, Anastasia let the woman fill Elliot's glass to the brim. Upon seeing that, Elliot frowned. President Pressgrave, I'm a close friend of Francis. It's rare to see such a capable young individual like yourself, so I would like to toast you too. The man beside Francis stood up and raised his glass, his voice full of pride. Standing up again, Elliot raised his glass half-heartedly, with the man adding, I'll finish my glass, but you can drink however much you want, since it was a close friend of Francis, he would also be considered a senior to Elliot. So, out of respect, the latter also finished his glass as well. Seeing him drink two full glasses of alcohol made Anastasia immediately recall that he had a weak stomach, yet Erica was already refilling his glass yet again. As Anastasia tugged on his sleeve, Elliot naturally leaned toward her. Don't drink so much. You have a weak stomach, remember? You might just upset it again, said Anastasia caringly. A smile appeared in Elliot's gaze when he heard that. Miss Tillman, are you worried about me right now? Looking at him, Anastasia then saw another senior beside her father had stood up, and her heart skipped a beat. Don't tell me that every one of Dad's friends is going to toast Elliot? Elliot came from a distinguished background. Meanwhile, these people were likely alcoholics from the looks of their beer bellies. In this kind of situation, it was customary to always toast the wealthiest around the table, as a person of stature was a respected person. Hence, Elliot became their target to toast to. P. President Pressgrave, I'm not good with words, but I would like to propose a toast to you. Here's to your health and hoping that your company will prosper. Even Elliot did not think that he would be targeted like this. However, due to them all being Francis' friends and that Francis himself would be his future father-in-law, Elliot, as the junior, couldn't afford to offend him. Standing up again, Elliot gracefully held his glass as he raised it. Thank you, Anastasia could only look on as the man finished another glass. Panic slowly hit her and she thought to herself, if seven or eight of Dad's seniors were to all toast with him, wouldn't he just black out on the spot? And Elliot was raised on high-end imported red wine as well. With the beers on the table being sold for less than ten on the market, Anastasia was afraid that something might happen to him if this continued. Young Master Pressgrave, it's a rare opportunity to be able to drink with you at the same table. Here, a toast. Another senior stood up and said that. Anastasia could clearly see Elliot getting tipsy, but she knew that it would be disrespectful to the person who proposed the toast if Elliot did not drink it. So, in the heat of the moment, she took his glass and said to the senior, I'm sorry, but the president has a weak stomach. Hence, I'll be accepting this toast on his behalf. After that, she drank it in one shot amidst everybody's shock. Then, she tugged at the dazed man beside him and said, President Pressgrave, don't you still have something very important to attend to? We have to go now. To this, Elliot only blinked in response. Having little choice at this point, Anastasia could only pull the chair away as she said to her father, Dad, President Pressgrave and I will be excusing ourselves first. Please enjoy your meals. Chapter 195 Elliot did not even have the chance to react to what had transpired when Anastasia wrapped her arms around him and pulled him up forcefully. Dad, everyone, please enjoy your meals. We have something else that we need to deal with. Hey, Erica called out hurriedly. As Elliot was being pulled out of the venue, he suddenly realized that the woman was afraid he might get drunk, hence the excuse to drag him away. She even helped him drink. She really does care about me. Finally, they reached the third floor's elevator and they bumped into Ray, who was just preparing to eat. Seeing that his boss was about to leave, he quickly ate to mouthfuls and got up. 
President Pressgrave, are we leaving now? He was constantly being toasted, so I was afraid there might be some problems. Ray, how about you take him back first? Anastasia asked him. Upon hearing that, Elliot shot a glance at Ray, hinting quite clearly at what he wanted. Intentionally looking at his wristwatch, Ray then replied, I'm sorry, Miss Tillman, but I can't send the president home. My father was just admitted to the hospital. This stunned Anastasia. What? Go there quickly then. I'll go to the hospital now. Reaching the ground floor, the trio exited the elevator, with Ray hailing for a taxi and leaving in a hurry. Then, Anastasia said to Elliot, Where's your car? At that moment, his bodyguard drove the car over, and she opened the door. Get in the car and go home. Accompany me, Elliot held onto her arm, preventing her from leaving. Seeing that it was already 7 point for p.m. and that she also had to go pick up her son, Anastasia nodded in agreement. All right, and so, she got into the car before Elliot followed her in. The door was shut, and the black sedan slowly left. At the banquet, Erica was left disappointed with no appetite, because however extravagant she dressed and however exquisite her makeup was, it all amounted to nothing, as Elliot's departure had taken away her heart and soul. Alex was also drinking away his sorrows by the side after clearly seeing that Anastasia was finding an excuse just to help Elliot drink. It seemed like she cared very much for this big shot. In the car, the atmosphere was a bit stuffy, with the scent of alcohol wafting in the air. Taking off his suit jacket, Elliot then loosened his necktie and opened the top three buttons of his shirt to let off some heat. Glancing at him, Anastasia noticed the impeccably tailored shirt accentuated the man's strong and tight forearms and slightly exhibited the sharp lines of his collarbones. Paired with his charismatic gaze, he gave off a sort of roguish feel. You'd better go home first. I can take a taxi to go pick up Jared later, Anastasia murmured to him. Upon hearing that, Elliot narrowed his eyes and questioned, Are you not going to take care of me? Feeling somewhat speechless, she looked at him. Aren't you fine? Why do you want me to take care of you? Who told you that I was fine? I'm a bit drunk and feeling some discomfort right now, Elliot muttered as he pretended to be weak. Truthfully, he did feel a bit nauseous due to all the alcohol tumbling inside his stomach. At that, Anastasia turned around immediately and asked, Where do you feel discomfort? It's the worst to drink on an empty stomach. Don't you still have stomach medicine at your place? I'll go over now to take two. With that, Elliot told the bodyguard her address. Not even allowed the time to rebuke, she could only say somewhat resignedly, this stomach medicine could be bought anywhere, so why do you need to come to my house for it? Don't you have it at your own home? I want you to take care of me, saying that, Elliot leaned back and shut his eyes as he furrowed his brows deeply, looking as if he was enduring something. Seeing his expression, Anastasia could not help but lean toward him. In a concerned tone, she murmured, Are you all right? My stomach is acting up again, said the man while still shutting his eyes. Right then, the bodyguard was driving in her home's direction, and they would likely reach in a few minutes. Observing that Elliot was not making this up, Anastasia thought that she should let him rest for a while at her place. Beneath the lights, one could observe a thin layer of sweat on his scalp, as if the pain had really started to hit him. This made her say gently, take two of the pills later at my house then. Chapter 196 Elliot opened his eyes but he looked lost, obviously meaning that he was still tipsy. It was due to too much alcohol in such a short amount of time that caused him to be like this. Stopping the car at Anastasia's community entrance, the bodyguard came to open the door immediately while simultaneously reaching to help Elliot up. Not wanting his help, Elliot shook away his arm. I'm fine. I don't need any help. Even though Elliot was drunk, he still cared about maintaining his strong image in front of Anastasia, as he did not want her to think that he was already at his limit. Sir, please don't leave first. You'll have to send him back later, said Anastasia to the bodyguard, to which the bodyguard nodded in response. All right, I'll stay here and wait for the president. 
Just as Elliot began to walk, Anastasia came over to help him. Watch your step, of course, he wasn't drunk to the point of not being able to walk properly, but the slender arm holding him made him happy. Hence, he didn't struggle, as showing the occasional weakness in front of this woman was necessary. Passing through the romantic garden under the moonlight, they reached the elevator and went up to her floor. Opening the door, Elliot then walked inside her house. Although it was just a small two-room apartment, it had a strange attraction that made him feel even more at home than his own house. Using his arm as a pillow, Elliot laid down lazily on the sofa, and he looked at the woman that was pouring water and searching for the medicine. I remember it was here. Where has it gone now? Did I throw it away? The sound of the woman mumbling to herself came from the cabinet. Meanwhile, Elliot was not in a hurry and he wished that she wouldn't find the medicine anytime soon. That way, he could have a reason to stay for the whole night. Because of the amount of work she had, Anastasia had some of her memories jumbled up. Finally, she remembered that she kept the medicine inside the cabinet of her room. Rushing over quickly, she found them, just as she expected. After reading the instructions, she took three pills and poured a cup of warm water for him. Here are the pills. There you go, setting them down on the coffee table, Anastasia watched as the man took it. Standing up, Elliot took the pills without any hesitation. After taking them, he continued to lie on the sofa, watching her. I want to rest for a bit more. On the other hand, Anastasia couldn't chase him right away too, due to his current state being caused by him attending her father's banquet. Under the light, it was obvious that Elliot had a flush on his handsome face, showing the signs of being drunk. Even Anastasia, who drank a glass of alcohol on his behalf, was feeling the burn of the alcohol in her stomach, which was why her heart ached for Elliot, who had downed a few glasses. Why did you drink that for me just now? You really do care about me, don't you? Elliot asked in his low baritone. Glancing at him, Anastasia replied, You think too much of yourself. I just don't want anything to happen to you at my father's banquet. Upon hearing that, Elliot was a bit speechless by the woman who kept running away from her own feelings. Is it that hard for you to admit that you care about me? Snorting, Anastasia rolled her eyes in response. President Pressgrave, you really do like to indulge in your own fantasies, don't you? However, Elliot suddenly hissed as he clutched his chest. Anastasia, who was just snorting at him, immediately asked, What's wrong? As she asked that, she walked over to the side of the sofa, leaning down to look at his face. Is there anywhere else that hurts? But at that instant, Elliot caught hold of her wrist and with a tug, he pulled her into his embrace. The next second, he flipped over and pressed her against the sofa. Seeing the man's sly smile made Anastasia realize that she had been tricked. You, and you say you don't care for me. Aren't you showing plenty of care right now? Elliot smirked as he wasn't going to let her escape that easily. You, get off me. Who said that I was concerned for you? I, I just didn't want anything that happened to you to implicate my dad too. Anastasia simply picked an excuse and went with it. But in Elliot's eyes, that was all just nonsense. Chapter 197 Anastasia, is there any meaning to you avoiding your feelings like this? Just say that you care about me and that you like me. It's not like I'll make a joke out of this. Elliot stared at her small face, his gaze full of love. Anastasia was stunned momentarily and she was about to react when his other hand held onto her jaw and he forcefully kissed her. Wide-eyed, Anastasia grunted in surprise. Is this man trying to take advantage of me again? Why do I not watch out for things like this more? I can't seem to escape the fate of getting forcefully kissed every time by him. Gosh, the smell of alcohol still coming from him made her feel faint, and his powerful kiss was like him trying to imprint himself onto her. Without her son at home, the whole place had become somewhere the man could let out his desires, with the kiss lasting till Elliot thought it was enough. Panting, he then finally let her go because if they were to continue, he would be the one that would suffer. Anastasia wasn't better off either as she was panting with a flushed face. She raised her hand, 
planning on slapping him. However, just as she was about to do it, she stared angrily into his love-struck eyes. His deep stare reflected her face clearly and for some reason, she could actually see the love in his gaze. Anastasia, I like you, from the man's hoarse voice came a confession. In the end, the hand that was raised midway did not land on his handsome face, and she put it away stiffly. Don't have it in your heart to hit me anymore? Elliot smiled slyly. Elliot, I don't like you, Anastasia replied loudly as she stared at him wide-eyed. His expression darkened upon hearing this. Is it that I've not done enough, or is it that I've somehow made you angry, taking advantage of me while forcing me to like you? Do you think that I would ever like you under such circumstances? Anastasia sneered. Is he really that confident that every woman he meets will fall in love with him at the very first sight? Yet, Elliot did not let go of her and still pinned her down in a suggestive way. He tried to control himself, but his gentle gaze held a hint of desire and possessiveness. Just like that, he kept staring and attacking her with his gaze. In the end, Anastasia, who could no longer look him in the eye, started to panic. And so, she reached out to try to push him away. Get up, Elliot. It was as if there was a strong magic in his stare and one would succumb to his charms if one looked into his gaze for too long. Even though Anastasia was staring at him angrily, Elliot still would not get up, instead staring back at her with eyes full of desire. Struggling in vain, Anastasia felt the heat, as well as the danger radiating off the man, making her panic for real. Elliot, I'm going to count to three now. Do you think I'm your son? Do you think I can be threatened like this? Smirking, Elliot dismissed her threats with just that sentence. This made Anastasia speechless. He really is a devil in disguise. If you don't get up now, I'll call the cops. It was you who brought me into your home of your own volition. And with me being your boss and you being my employee, things would become quite hard to explain at the police station. Smirking even more, Elliot continued. What do you think they will believe? You seducing me? Or me seducing you? Although the man was arguing against her right now, he had a loving smile, making Anastasia itch to hit him in the face. Probably because he had teased her enough and didn't actually want to make her mad, Elliot suddenly leaned over and gave her a peck on the lips. Anastasia, please try and open up your heart to me. I promise you won't be disappointed. Hope flashed in his eyes and he pleaded at her with a hoarse voice. For people who were born with a golden spoon like Elliot, it was rare for him to plead with someone. Finally, the man got up, leaving Anastasia stunned for a few seconds before sitting up. Then, she proceeded to open the entrance door without any hesitation. You'd better leave. I don't want you staying any further. Suddenly, pain flashed across Elliot's eyes and he clutched his stomach as cold sweat covered his forehead. Thereafter, he stumbled and crashed onto the sofa. Meanwhile, an icy Anastasia was about to send him away. However, seeing him like this made her close the door and rush over to his side in the blink of an eye. What's wrong? Chapter 198 My stomach hurts. Do you have anything to eat at home? Elliot raised his head and asked. After drinking so much alcohol tonight, his stomach, which has always sustained itself on high-grade whole foods, naturally could not take it. Wait here, I'll cook some noodles for you. With that, Anastasia then went to the kitchen. Sitting on the sofa, he smiled warmly as he watched the person in the kitchen busying herself. No matter what she said, she still cared about him. It was just that she did not want to admit it. After 10 minutes, Anastasia came out holding a bowl of noodles, of which the noodles were of low sodium. Normally, she would cook this for her son, but she now used it all to feed the man. Walking over, Elliot ate it without hesitation. Looking at the man under the light, it was even more evident that Jared's face resembled his. Wait, what nonsense am I thinking about? They just have similar looking features, that's all. While Elliot was eating the noodles, Anastasia went to clean up her room. Suddenly, her heart skipped a beat upon discovering that it was already p.m. goodness. I haven't even picked up my son yet. Elliot, you'll have to leave after eating. 
I need to go pick Jared up, urged Anastasia. I can let Ray go pick him up. It's not safe for you, going out alone late at night, Elliot immediately replied. Isn't Ray's father hospitalized? Upon realizing that fact, Elliot paused for a few seconds before stating, I'll let my bodyguard pick him up. Just then, Anastasia's phone rang. Nigel's calling me. Picking it up, she said. Hello, Nigel. I'll come pick Jared up now. There's no need for that. The little rascal has already fallen asleep here. Just let him stay over at my place, on the other end of the line. Nigel laughed, obviously happy to have the boy accompany him. What? Jared's already asleep? I'd hate to burden you, though. It's nothing. Just let me try to be his father and sleep with him for one night. Truth was, this was exactly what Nigel wanted. It was after a long while until Anastasia finally agreed. Uh, all right then. I'll let Jared sleep over just for tonight. I'll pick him up first thing tomorrow morning, sure. Are you done with work? Are you outside or at home right now? I'm at home. Hey, Anastasia, I found out that Jared really looks like me, and his face resembles mine exactly when I was young. Say, don't you think this is some special fate between him and I? Nigel started to hint at her again. While talking, Anastasia slowly made her way to the balcony. She laughed as she commented, Jared resembles you when you were a child. How is that possible though? He really does. If you don't believe me, I can send my childhood pictures for you to see. The resemblance is uncanny. Nigel kept emphasizing, you don't have to. I believe you. As long as you looked good as a child, that means that my son looks handsome too. Are you implying that I'm handsome too? You always were handsome. You like handsome guys, right? With me being so handsome, that means you like me too. Nigel laughed out happily on the other end of the line. Anastasia, who was teased to laughter by his joke, also laughed out loud. Yet, at that moment, the man who was still eating the noodles at the table suddenly found the food to be bland and tasteless after hearing their conversation. Whenever this woman was with him, she would act like she was facing her mortal enemy, but when she was doing anything else with another man, she would always put on a smile and talk in a sweet voice. Do I really not deserve to see her smile? Meanwhile, Anastasia did not want to chat anymore and told Nigel, I'll have to trouble you then, Nigel. I'm going to take a bath now, so I'll be hanging up first. All right, remember to think about me, I will. I'll treat you to a meal next time, all right. I'll be looking forward to it, okay? Goodbye, Anastasia then hung up after that and just enjoyed the cool breeze on the balcony when suddenly, a cold husky voice came from behind her. Someone had a grand old time with Nigel. Looking back at the man who suddenly appeared on the balcony, she raised her eyebrows. Have you finished your noodles? I have, then you best be going. It's getting quite late now. Oh, and I'm not going to pick Jared up tonight as he'll be sleeping over at Nigel's. Chapter 199 An envious man, my baby's daddy, so that means that you'll be sleeping alone tonight? A roguish look flashed across the man's eyes. Instantly, Anastasia was on high alert as she looked at him and asked, what do you mean? Nothing much. It's just that I want to sleep on your bed. Don't push your luck. Go back to sleep at your own home. Otherwise, I'll ban you from ever eating over here again. Your dad looked very happy tonight, but the time left until his company is taken over is only three months away. If you want your dad to still look this happy in the future, just let me sleep here for the night. Elliot uttered the cruel words while looking at the faraway lights. Meanwhile, Anastasia was left in disbelief by his words and she froze for a second. The opposition this time is very strong. If I don't interfere, no one has the ability to save your father's company. Maybe your father can go around asking for favors and using his connections, but it won't change the fate of his company being taken over in the end. Feeling as though all the energy had left her body, Anastasia was stuck in a dilemma. She did not want anything to happen to her father's company, yet she also did not want to beg Elliot. Maybe my dad would be luckier, maybe his company. However, Anastasia could not continue, 
as she knew that her father's luck all these years was actually just Elliot helping him out behind the scenes. Anastasia, do you think that it would be better for your father to go beg someone else, or do you think that it would be better if you begged me on his behalf? His voice growing hoarse. Elliot then continued, even if I'm not obligated to do so, I am still very willing to help you and your father out. Hearing this, Anastasia could only look at the city's nightlights, and she had the sudden feeling that even the sky was not big enough to fit her troubles. How did things spiral to this point? The man she did not want to beg the most turned out to be the man who could solve all her problems. In the end, it was all because she was not tough enough, yet she also did not want to see her father go around begging people, so Anastasia bit her lip and looked at Elliot. Do you want to sleep in my son's or my bed? Smirking, the man answered definitively, your bed. The moment the words left her mouth, Anastasia felt as if she had trampled all over her principles. In the end, she hung her head low and despised how she was acting at the moment. Guessing her thoughts, Elliot suddenly hugged her. Anastasia, I won't permit you to look down on yourself. Even if you didn't beg me, I would still have helped your father. I promise that in this life, I will make sure that you and your father will live in peace and never have to worry about money ever again. Admittingly, the man had a power to easily pick on her softest spot at her most vulnerable moments. Thank you. Reaching out, Anastasia tried to push him away, but Elliot would not let her do so. At that point, he dropped a loving kiss to her hair. Don't worry. I'm here to protect you. This sentence made Anastasia think that he was omnipotent and that he could block anything from harming her and her family. For some unknown reason, she stayed in his embrace without struggling, and she did not know if it was because the feeling of being protected by him was very nice or that she did not have the strength to struggle anymore. They stayed this way until her phone rang again. Taking it out, she saw it was from Nigel, so she broke free from Elliot's embrace while composing herself. Just as Anastasia was about to answer the call, the man snatched it away from her and turned on the loudspeaker. Hello, Anastasia. Are you afraid of sleeping alone? Do you want to chat for a while? The lovesick voice of Nigel echoed around the silent balcony. This made Anastasia's face blush. This evil man. Why did he turn on the loudspeaker? Yet, since the phone was in Elliot's hands, she couldn't snatch it back even if she wanted to. Uh, there's no need for that. Nigel, just go to sleep. Good night. Anastasia just wanted to end the conversation as soon as possible. I can't sleep. I'm thinking of you, you know? At this point, Nigel was still unaware that his flirtatious words were being overheard by a third party. Nigel, Nigel, stop talking right now and just go to sleep. I'm going to hang up now. However, Nigel began to act spoiled. Sing a song for me then. It can even be a children's song used to humor Jared. If you do it, then I'll sleep. If you don't, then I won't. Elliot's expression became thunderous when he heard those words, while Anastasia's face became as red as a tomato. Why did she have to encounter such a thing? Chapter 200 Nigel, stop fooling around now and go to sleep. I really am going to hang up now. Saying that, Anastasia rushed over to snatch her phone back. However, Elliot did not want to give it back. Anastasia did not dare get too loud, as it would be hard to explain if Nigel found out that another man was at her house. It would definitely damage her reputation. I don't want to. Quick, just one song. I'm waiting for you. Obviously, they could hear that Nigel had turned over and was waiting patiently. Seeing how high Elliot's hand was, Anastasia jumped in order to reach her phone. At the very next second, she found her waist suddenly hugged by an arm as the man pressed her against the balcony and accurately kissed her while still raising his other hand. Anastasia's mind went blank and she was humiliated to the extreme. Is he doing this on purpose? Anastasia, sing for me. Humor this big baby to sleep. Nigel was still begging on the other end of the line. This almost drove her crazy. How can I do that? I'm being kissed by this beast of a man right now. 
An idea suddenly came to her in the heat of the moment, and she circled her arms around Elliot's neck, pretending to immerse herself in the kiss. Seeing his hand slowly lowering as expected, Anastasia quickly snatched her phone back and went to the side, slightly panting. Nigel, just go to sleep. I'll hang up now. Anastasia shouted down the line before she ended the call. After that, she stared at the evil man. Was that fun? To this, Elliot only innocently replied, I was just agitated. You, not wanting to bother with him any longer, Anastasia would have chased him out of the house if it weren't for her father's problems needing Elliot's help. If Nigel knew that Anastasia was actually being kissed for a good ten seconds while they were on the phone, he would have most likely lost his mind because that meant that he would have lost to his shameless cousin. After taking her important belongings out of her room, Anastasia said to the man who was sitting on the sofa before going to sleep in her son's room, you should go to bed earlier. And do not disturb me while I'm sleeping, but you haven't even bathed yet. Elliot raised his eyebrows at that. Whether I bathe or not is none of your business, as Anastasia did not want to chance the man doing something despicable, she was content to scroll through her phone in her son's room. After all, she wouldn't stink to high heaven just from not showering a day. That night, Elliot got his wish of sleeping on her bed again. The next morning, Anastasia opened her eyes dazedly. It was only then that she realized she had been sleeping in her son's room and remembered that her room was being used by Elliot. Opening the door, she saw that it was only 7 a.m. Since it was a Saturday, Anastasia did not think that Elliot would be up, so she stretched while walking to the balcony, seeing as today was a day where she could actually relax. On the weekend, the city had a relaxed feeling to it, as the quiet streets did not have the usual hustle and bustle of the morning traffic. Pouring a cup of water for herself, Anastasia thought about what to have for breakfast and when she should go pick up her son. Just then, the sound of the main door suddenly being opened surprised her, and she turned around to find Elliot coming back with breakfast in his hands. You were up already? A stunned Anastasia looked at the man. I'm an early bird by habit, setting down the breakfast on the table, Elliot then said, come and eat. Looking at him, she was a bit surprised, thinking that successful men really do have a firm grip on their time and that he actually did not sleep in. While Anastasia sat down and ate with him, Elliot elegantly held a piece of bread while saying nonchalantly, I can accompany you to pick Jared up later. Immediately, she rejected his notion by waving her hand. There's no need for that. I'll go by myself. Are you afraid of Nigel seeing us together? Elliot asked while peering at her. For reasons unbeknownst to herself, Anastasia just did not want anybody to know how close she was with Elliot. By the way, President Pressgrave, you are going to keep the promise of helping my father out, right? Changing the subject, Anastasia thought that since she had already let Elliot sleep on her bed, he had better honor his promise. Of course, I will. Smiling, Elliot continued, whatever promises I make to you, I will always honor them. Unable to look into his charismatic eyes, Anastasia could only look down and continue to munch on her bread. Thank you. Chapter 201 Did you sleep in my bed? After breakfast, Anastasia grabbed her purse and made her way to the door. As she did so, she raised a brow and glanced at the man on the couch before saying, President Pressgrave, I'm going to pick up Jared now. Are you planning to stay here? Exasperation filled Elliot when he heard this. He wanted to go with her, but the woman clearly had no intention of letting him accompany her. He rose from the couch and said, I'll drop you off at Nigel's place. He didn't sound like he would take no for an answer. No, it's fine. I can get a cab. My car is right downstairs. I don't I know where Nigel lives. Elliot shot her a defiant look. It was then that she realized she had indeed forgotten to ask for Nigel's address. She looked at the time, and upon seeing that it was only 7.30 a.m., she didn't want to call Nigel. Well, only if you're free. I don't want to impose, I am. With that, Elliot turned and walked out the door. Downstairs was Ray, who had already driven the car over. 
Elliot slid into the back seat while Anastasia followed suit. Then, Anastasia addressed Ray out of concern, Mr. Osborne, I hope your father's doing all right. He replied with ease, thank you for asking, Miss Tillman. The surgery went very well, I'm glad to hear that, she said with a genuinely happy smile. Then, she noticed that the man next to her had put on a change of clothes. He was no longer dressed in the white shirt he had worn yesterday, but a gray one. She frowned slightly. Perhaps Ray brought him a change of clothes. Being the clean freak he is, he would never wear something from the night before. Upon thinking about this, she wondered whether it meant that Elliot had taken a shower in her bathroom. Perhaps he showered last night, but did he sleep in my bed without any clothes? It was as if her mind imploded at that moment. She swallowed and while she wanted to ask him about it, she didn't want to do it in front of Ray. Instead, she reached for her phone and texted her question to Elliot. In the silence of the car, Elliot's phone chimed once with a new message. He picked up his phone and looked at the screen, on which was a text from Anastasia that read, Did you sleep in my bed without clothes last night? A smirk curled on his lips as he turned to give her a cryptic look. Anastasia took that as confirmation and glowered at him angrily. Ugh, who said he could sleep naked in my bed? The man replied to her text with a devilish flair, Don't worry. My personal life is as spotless as it is orderly and I won't cause you any trouble. As she read this, she felt rage well up in her, and she wanted nothing more than to beat him senseless. The fact that he had history with Haley irked her to no end, and her face was somber as she replied, Don't ever do it again. When he saw her stormy expression, he knew that he couldn't afford to aggravate her anymore, so he typed, I didn't shower last night, and all I did was put on a change of clothes. Also, I didn't sleep naked in your bed, Anastasia cast Elliot a skeptical look when she saw this. Meanwhile, Ray couldn't help feeling awkward when he realized that the both of them were texting each other in the back seat. Do they want to talk about something that I'm not supposed to be privy to? If that were the case, he wouldn't mind stopping the car somewhere and getting down to give them some privacy. Elliot emphasized with another message, it's true. I never lie. With that, he turned to gaze at Anastasia steadily. She blinked, choosing to believe him in the end. Nigel's house was in a very fashionable and prestigious villa neighborhood where all the young scions of the city made their home. The villas featured state-of-the-art facilities, and they faced the quayside where a neat row of luxurious yachts had been docked. Ray parked the car outside a grand-looking villa. Anastasia looked around and sighed, for she was sure that she would have been lost if she came into the area alone. Thank you, President Pressgrave. Have a safe journey back, she said politely. Then, she opened the car door to get down. However, she had only just stepped out of the vehicle when she saw that Elliot had gotten out as well. She gapped at him as if to silently ask him what he was doing. He saw the question in her eyes and shrugged. I haven't been by Nigel's place for a while. I think a cup of tea with an old friend would do nicely. With that, he strode up to the front door like he owned the place. Anastasia hurried after him and bit out in hushed tones, President Pressgrave, don't you think you should come by for tea some other day? She was going to have a lot of explaining to do if she were to be seen showing up at Nigel's house with Elliot. No, Elliot answered imperiously before he reached out to ring the doorbell. Right then, Anastasia wished she could dig a hole in the ground and bury herself in it. She should have known better than to take Elliot up on his offer to drop her here. It was clear to see that he was trying to give Nigel the wrong impression on purpose. Chapter 202 The Gatekeeper, I'm Coming Nigel's voice came from the video intercom. Anastasia quickly moved to block the camera and crossed her arms as she began to think about how she was going to explain herself to Nigel. It was frustrating that Elliot consistently put her in such sticky situations. There was a beeping sound that came from the door as it unlocked, and Elliot put his hand on the doorknob. He was just about to go in when he glanced at the woman who had her back turned to him. With a raised brow, he then asked, Aren't you coming in? You go ahead. I need to make a phone call, said Anastasia as she took out her phone to dial a number, 
but he saw through her act and reached out to snatch her phone away. Come in with me, he said in a commanding tone. Give me back my phone, Elliot, she demanded incredulously. However, he walked into the house with her phone in hand. She tried to make it look as if they had arrived separately by dawdling on the front step, but seeing as her phone was with him, there was little to no point in putting up pretenses. As such, she stormed after him and made her way into the exquisite glass-walled villa. Nigel had only just put on his clothes, and he was making his way downstairs when he saw the man and woman in his living room. Astonished, he thought, Elliot? Anastasia? Why are they both here at the same time? He recalled only seeing Elliot's figure in the video intercom just now, though he did see the silhouette of a woman whose back had been turned to the camera. Nigel had believed her to be Elliot's assistant or something, but as it turned out, it was Anastasia all along. Confusion dawned upon him as he blinked and asked hesitantly, D did you both come here together? Uh, no, we came in separate cars and ran into each other at your front doorstep, so we decided to come in together. This is all pretty coincidental, Anastasia explained anxiously. Is that it? Nigel bought it. Actually, I went to Miss Tillman's father's banquet last night and ended up getting drunk, so I slept over at her place. I'm just tagging along while she picks up Jared. All it took was one sentence for Elliot to reveal the truth, and Anastasia turned a bright shade of red as she quickly shot the man a deadly glare. He didn't even think how this might affect me. Nigel, on the other hand, was stunned for a few seconds. Then, he gapped at Anastasia incredulously. Why didn't you tell me about your father's banquet? I should have gone and celebrated too, shouldn't I? Well, it was only a small celebration, she explained as she averted his gaze guiltily. Jared is still sleeping, so it might be a while before he wakes up, Nigel said. Then, he met Elliot's eyes, and the both of them were suddenly locked in a wordless battle. Elliot's gaze was steady as he said, Thank you for taking care of Jared last night, Nigel. Don't sweat it, Nigel said through gritted teeth. He couldn't believe that Elliot had dropped Jared off last night and secretly attended Francis' celebration. He even got drunk and slept over at Anastasia's place. He was starting to look at this cousin of his differently, for only men could understand what other men were thinking. Elliot set this whole thing up right from the beginning. Anastasia, why don't you go upstairs? Having said that, Nigel gave Elliot a dark look and said as he turned to walk toward the balcony, Elliot, there's something I need to talk to you about. Elliot fell in step behind him. Anastasia didn't think too much of this, believing that they really had something important to discuss. Over on the balcony, there was a confrontational gleam in Nigel's eyes as he looked at Elliot. He had never questioned Elliot quite so seriously as he did at that moment. Are you serious about Anastasia, or is she just a new notch in your belt? He asked. Elliot's expression grew somber as he looked at the younger man darkly and said, Of course, I'm dead serious about her, is that so? All of this isn't just stemming from the gratitude you have toward her mother after she sacrificed her life to save yours? There had been a time when Elliot thought whatever affection and fondness he had for Anastasia was born out of his gratitude, but after spending all this time with her, he realized that he had a special place for her in his heart that had nothing to do with her mother's sacrifice. Nigel, I really like her. You have to believe me, Elliot said softly, but there was no mistaking the steely edge to his voice. In that case, would you be able to accept Jared even though he isn't your kid? Will you treat him as your own? Nigel pressed further as his gaze burned into Elliot's. He knew he didn't stand a chance with Anastasia, but that wouldn't stop him from being her gatekeeper and evaluating the man who would eventually spend forever with her. Chapter 203 I will, Elliot promised solemnly with a nod. He understood where Nigel was coming from, and the reverse was also true. What if you marry her tonight and she tells you that she doesn't want any more kids? Will you choose to respect her decision? Nigel went on to ask, wishing desperately that Elliot could do all the things for Anastasia that he couldn't. Once again, Elliot nodded and said, I will respect every single one of her thoughts and decisions, 
Nigel's gaze was piercing as he eyed his cousin somberly. Also, do you promise that you'll protect her, take care of her, and love her forever? Elliot could tell how much Nigel loved Anastasia. As his heart sank, he clapped a hand on Nigel's shoulder. Nigel, you've known me since we were kids, and you know what I'm like as a person, an apologetic look flashed in his eyes as he added quietly, I'm sorry, Nigel, they had been as close as brothers since they were little. And now that they were in love with the same woman, it couldn't be easy for Nigel to let go. Nigel, on the other hand, leaned against the balcony rail behind him as a bitter smile played on his lips. You don't have to apologize. I know Anastasia has always seen me as nothing more than a friend, and there are far worse things than to see you treat her right and love her in all the ways I can. Upon hearing this, Elliot reached out to pat his shoulder, but he couldn't find the words to comfort him. At that moment, they fixed their gazes on the woman who was seated on the living room couch. While these two men were talking about their feelings for her, Anastasia was entirely oblivious as she admired the interesting and somewhat whimsical painting on the wall. She looked dazzling and alluring in the morning light, and she looked like she could make anywhere her own space. Nigel was reluctant to give up his feelings for her, but at the same time, he was incredibly relieved. He glanced at Elliot and said, I'll leave her to you, Elliot. Elliot's smoldering gaze was still on Anastasia, and there was no mistaking the possessiveness that burned in his obsidian orbs. He acknowledged what Nigel said. She can only be mine, and I won't allow any other man to get close to her. Presently, Anastasia watched as the two men walked up to her, their silhouettes backlit under the morning sun. She found herself staring at them like how one might be captivated by stunning works of art. The press graves have such outrageous genes, she mused. Both cousins were tall and broad-shouldered, and their trimmed waistlines, as well as mile-long legs, made them incredibly fine specimens. In particular, Elliot, who was the taller of the two, looked like a Greek god in the morning light. When she caught herself daydreaming, she quickly retracted her gaze. She could feel nothing when she stared at Nigel, but her heart would inexplicably start beating wildly whenever she looked at Elliot. What's going on? She ignored the butterflies in her stomach as she asked aloud, Hey, Nigel, can I go up and check on Jared? Sure thing. He bunked in with me in the master bedroom last night, Nigel replied casually with a smile. When Elliot heard this, he frowned and quickly stopped Anastasia. Wait here, I'll go and get him. Nigel didn't want to miss an opportunity to aggravate Elliot, so he said, ignore him, Anastasia. Just go up and take a look around my room. What is there to look at in your room? Elliot shot his cousin a dark look as jealousy seized him. Anastasia had no idea why they were bickering all of a sudden, but before she could say anything, Elliot had already walked up the stairs. She didn't want to go with him, so she turned and said to Nigel instead, thanks for babysitting Jared last night. Don't worry about it. We're family after all, excuse me. Nigel's eyes widened as he frantically explained, oh, I mean, uh, we're kind of like a family anyway. She smiled when she heard this. You're right. You're already like an uncle to Jared. Exasperation welled up in him. All I'll ever get to be is his uncle. It's not like I have a choice now. It wasn't long before Elliot descended the stairs with Jared in his arms. Mommy, Jared greeted happily when he saw his mother in the living room. Anastasia beamed at him lovingly, and there was a gentle look in her eyes as she reached out to hold him. However, Elliot seemed intent on keeping the little boy in his arms as he turned to say to Nigel, We'll get going then. Nigel could only nod as he walked them to the door. Then, he stood on the front step and watched the three of them leave. He found himself thinking that they looked just like a family. I hope things work out between you and Anastasia, Elliot. I can't wait to have her as a cousin-in-law. Chapter 204 Good luck, Elliot. Nigel yelled from across the yard and put up a fist in the air in a show of moral support. Elliot's eyes crinkled as he nodded at the younger man. Anastasia, on the other hand, was helping Jared fasten his seatbelt, 
so she didn't notice anything strange going on between the two cousins. After that, Elliot took the passenger seat while Anastasia sat in the back with Jared, grateful for the ample legroom in the sedan. They first had lunch at a high-end restaurant, where Jared ate his food in high spirits. When they were done, the little boy suddenly asked to go to the museum, and Elliot agreed to it without a second thought. As such, Anastasia could only go along with them. Ray went as well to keep an eye on Jared, thinking that he could babysit the boy and give Elliot and Anastasia a break to enjoy some quality time together. Presently, Anastasia had only just stepped into the museum when her phone rang. Upon seeing that it was a call from Francis, she picked it up and greeted, Hey, Dad, is young Master Elliot all right? I hope he didn't get a hangover this morning, Francis said worriedly on the other line. My friends shouldn't have forced him to drink all that liquor, don't worry, Dad. He's fine, she reassured. By the way, I was wondering if Bourgeois is still hiring at the moment. Erica is thinking about going to work at your company. Anastasia resisted the urge to snort at this. Yeah, right, as if Erica wants to work. She just wants to get close to Elliot, and the only way to do that is by working in the company. Sorry, Dad, but I don't think Erica is a suitable candidate for the company. I know she's no designer, but she could be a clerk or an assistant or something. It's not every day she claims that she wants to be a working girl, after all. I'd appreciate it if you could help me ask President Pressgrave about this. Perhaps he can make some arrangements for her, Dad. I can't just ask him about these things. He's not even the one in charge of recruitment, Anastasia argued. After all, she did not want to see Erica loitering around her workplace. Francis sighed. Well, I guess I'll just have to call him myself. He gave me his name card last night, she faltered, and it looked like her father was dead set on having Erica work in Bourgeois. Guess he's getting tired of bankrolling for her. Fine, I'll ask him about it. Don't go calling him on your own, Dad, she said tiredly, knowing that Francis wouldn't take no for an answer at this point. Great, give me a call and tell me how the discussion went. Erica's finally taking life seriously, and we have to help her get a good head start, right? Sure, Anastasia replied emotionlessly. After she hung up the call, she looked up at the man who was currently bringing her son from one exhibit to the next. She let out a sigh and brisk walked up to them. Elliot had brought Jared to his favorite part of the museum, which was the dinosaur exhibit. While Anastasia had brought him here before, Jared was still excited, and he was having a whale of a time. She watched as he trotted alongside Elliot's towering frame, and she thought they looked like father and son. Elliot would occasionally pick him up, and there were moments when he would let Jared pull him around the museum. Jared would also tilt his head to one side curiously while he asked questions about the artifacts. Elliot, on the other hand, played the role of the ever-patient father who elaborated on the history and the scientific evolution of the dinosaurs, and Jared was all ears. Miss Tillman, isn't it wonderful how President Pressgrave and Jared get along so well? Ray asked as he came over to where Anastasia was standing, she smiled and nodded. It is, Jared really likes him, I think President Pressgrave would make an excellent father, Ray added meaningfully. The implication behind his words did not escape Anastasia, but she knew that she and Elliot could never work out, and Jared's affections for him were only temporary. When they left the dinosaur exhibit, they ventured into other exhibits that Jared liked. Eventually, they found themselves on the third floor of the museum. When Ray walked up to her, Anastasia said, Could you help me look after Jared for a bit? I need to speak with President Pressgrave alone. Very well, Ray said with a polite smile. Anastasia then sauntered over to Elliot. President Pressgrave, there's something I need to talk to you about. Ray can keep an eye on Jared for a while. Elliot glanced over at Ray and instructed coolly, don't let him out of your sight. When all was settled, Anastasia led him over to the more quiet end of the gallery where there were hardly any visitors. As Elliot drew closer to her, she pursed her lips and thought about how she was going to phrase things. She didn't want to owe him any more favors, 
but it seemed unavoidable right now. What is it? He asked softly as he fixed his dark gaze on her. Here's the thing my dad wants to know if Bourgeois is still hiring. He wants my sister, Erica, to find work there, Anastasia explained and looked up at Elliot. Even in the dim lighting, she could still see the chiseled planes and angles of his handsome features, and for a moment, she thought she could drown in those magnetic obsidian eyes of his. Chapter 205 Elliot smiled as he eyed her teasingly. Are you asking me for a favor? Anastasia shrugged nonchalantly and said, I'm only doing this on behalf of my dad. Well, seeing as he's your dad, I don't think it'd be right of me to refuse him the favor. Get your sister to come into work on Monday, he declared readily. She gapped at him in astonishment and realized that he was granting favors out of his gratitude again. Just then, he tipped his head to the side and glanced at whatever was behind her, drawling, You've got guts bringing me here, though. Upon hearing this, she turned around, and she nearly jumped out of her skin when she saw the amphibians and reptiles that were preserved in formalin. She shuddered and shrunk against Elliot like she wanted to put as much distance as she could between herself and the morbid exhibit. Elliot seized the chance to wrap an arm around her. She gasped, but before she could react, she found herself in his embrace. She could smell the fresh and pleasant scent of him, and she pushed him away as she snapped, Contain yourself, Elliot. Hey, you were the one who pressed up against me first, he pointed out with a grin. When he saw that there was nobody around this section of the exhibit, he dipped his head and placed a chaste kiss on her lips. Then, he broke into a mischievous smirk as he muttered, Consider this a repayment for the favor just now, Blood rushed to Anastasia's face as she shoved him aside, and she thanked the heavens that Jared and Ray weren't nearby. After that, she gave Francis a call to tell him that Erica could start work on Monday. Over at the Tillman residence, Erica had just gotten off the phone with Francis. Then, she flew down the staircase gleefully and found her mother. Mom, Mom, I'm going to start working at Bourgeois on Monday. President Pressgrave was the one who personally hired me. Naomi was elated to hear this. Does this mean Erica has a chance to get close to Elliot now? Dad told me that President Pressgrave himself agreed to this. Do you think it's because I made a really good impression last night? Erica asked happily and somewhat delusionally. Naomi thought the same thing. Erica had sat next to Elliot during the banquet last night, and there was no denying how gorgeous she had looked in her evening dress. Erica, she began, Make sure to seize every opportunity there is while you're at Bourgeois. I'm sure that if I get a chance to run into President Pressgrave often enough, I could make him fall for me, Erica said confidently. She vowed to use every last trick in the book to see this plan through. She couldn't care less about making an honest living by working at Bourgeois. Instead, she wanted to seduce Elliot so that she could one day marry rich and have a jet-setting lifestyle. At that moment, Naomi clutched her daughter's arm and said, Erica, there's something I have to tell you, Erica blinked. What is it, Mom? You see, Elliot actually owes our family a huge favor. I've never told you this, but Anastasia's mother only died because she sacrificed herself to save Elliot. Without her, he would have died when he was a toddler. What? Erica's eyes widened in surprise. She knew that Anastasia's mother was a cop who had died while on duty, but she didn't think that the reason for her death was a great sacrifice to save Elliot's life. Given that the press graves owe Anastasia big time, you'll have to watch your back at Bourgeois. It might only be child's play for her to snag young master Elliot. A vicious look flashed in Erica's eyes as she seethed. I ought to tell President Pressgrave about the time Anastasia got screwed over at Abyss Club. No man in their right mind would think of her so greatly after they hear about that. Naomi wasn't the least bit worried that Erica would let her down, for she was certain that her daughter had picked up her skills and affinity for schemes. You just have to remember that we'll be in deep trouble if Anastasia ends up marrying into the Pressgraves. Erica, once you get into the company, you have to do everything in your power to stop her from marrying Elliot, 
even if it means that you won't be able to marry him yourself. Both mother and daughter were on the same page about this. However, neither of them knew that Erica only got the job at Bourgeois courtesy of Anastasia, seeing as Francis withheld this detail from them. Meanwhile, following their excursion to the museum, Elliot dropped Anastasia and Jared home. He watched them walk into the apartment building and left to take care of his work. Having had a lazy Sunday, Anastasia started to pour herself into competing for the position of associate director. She heard that Alice had already gone to the shop she had chosen to survey it last Friday night. As things were, Alice seemed intent on beating Anastasia out for the promotion. Chapter 206 Anastasia dropped Jared off at kindergarten early that morning. As the little guy made his way through the doors, he turned around and blew her a kiss. Empowered by his sweet gesture, she vowed that she would get the promotion and become associate director so that she could finally have better path. It wasn't until after she had arrived at the company and sat down in her office that she remembered Erica was coming into work today. At the thought of this, she dialed Grace's extension and asked her to look into this. Not long after, Grace came running into Anastasia's office with the information, Miss Anastasia, your sister has been arranged to work as a receptionist at the front desk. Well, seeing as she doesn't have any corporate experience whatsoever, I guess manning the front desk suits her, Anastasia thought. Apparently, Erica had come into work early and started her job at the front desk. She had brought lipsticks as gifts for the other receptionists, who were easily won over and got along with her right off the bat. She wasn't short of money, and because of that, she had given them all limited edition lipsticks, thereby collecting brownie points. After she settled down at the front desk, Erica picked up the receiver and found Anastasia's extension before dialing it. Hello, who's this? I'm working at your company now. Are you surprised? Erica bragged with a smile on her face. Anastasia was rendered speechless. Looks like Dad didn't tell her how she got the job in the first place. In that case, make sure you do your best and stop making Dad worry about you incessantly, like I need you to point that out to me. Don't tell anyone in the company that we're sisters. I don't want them to think that I only got the job because of you, Erica said snidely. I should be the one saying that, Anastasia replied dryly. With an indignant scoff, Erica hung up the phone. When the call ended, Anastasia put the receiver down and got up to leave. She had to go into the shop and see how things were going, but just as she was heading out, Felicia told her that the competition was fierce. Both her rivals would soon start rallying support from friends and relatives, and Anastasia was advised to do the same. However, there was no way Anastasia could rally support when she didn't even have that many friends or family to begin with. All she had on her side were luck and innate talent. Meanwhile, in the main conference room at Pressgrave Corporation, the man who was chairing the weekly meeting appeared somber as usual. That's all for the weekly report, President Pressgrave. Is there anything else you'd like for us to do? Elliot scanned the executives in the meeting and loosened up in his seat to assume a more casual stance. Then, he said in a low and grave tone, I need all your help with something. The audience immediately stiffened at this. All this while, they had only ever heard disparaging remarks from him for their incompetence, but never a request for their help. What is it, President Pressgrave? We'll be sure to help you in whatever ways we can, I have a friend who works in a jewelry store, and she's running a little low on sales this month. I need each of you to drop by her shop once, and your expenditure must not be less than a million. Upon hearing this, the executives in the room let out a collective sigh of relief. This was the first time they had heard the president make such a strange request, but given their annual income, it was easy enough for them to do as he said. If you know anyone interested in buying jewelry, it would be great if you could get them to drop by the shop as well, Elliot added. That's no problem at all, President Pressgrave. We'll drop by your friend's store and give her sales a boost. Don't go all at once, though, Elliot interjected. Ray, draw up a schedule for Lance. We want those sales to look credible. Yes, President Pressgrave, 
Ray replied as he tried to keep himself from laughing. There were several moments where he had to clap a hand over his mouth and look down to hide his amusement. President Pressgrave is pulling out all the stops just to rally support for Miss Tillman. All she wants to do is compete for the position of associate director, and President Pressgrave already has all the executives in the corporation on board to boost her sales. While this was happening, Anastasia dropped by the shop and spoke to the manager about the sales for the past two days. Due to the less than strategic location of the shop, their sales weren't looking so good. Is there no other way we can gain more sales, Miss Shastain? She asked the manager. Miss Tillman, if you're suggesting that we advertise, then we're going to need a much more flexible budget. That said, if your company is willing to fork out the money, you can consider getting one of those socialites or influencers to market the jewelry, but you'll have to be able to pay them for it. Anastasia fell into deep thought. She knew this would be a gamble since there were plenty of examples where hiring influencers to market the products ended up as a failed venture. Besides, she would have to pay out of her own pocket if she wanted to go along with this, for the company would never approve a budget for something like this. She had always been a mere designer, and right now, she was being confronted by her lack of marketing skills. Chapter 207 At the end of the day, the competition for the position of associate director was starting to feel like a competition to see who had more friends that were richer. The one who won in both of these categories would already be at an advantage, and this didn't include their actual sales from the store. Anastasia learned the hard way that she was falling behind. She had been abroad for five years, and she hadn't kept in touch with any of her old friends and relatives for a while now. To add salt to injury, even if she was able to get a hold of her friends and relatives, they might not be able to afford the expensive jewelry side as she sat in the manager's office and browsed through various marketing strategies, only to conclude that most of them would not work out for her. Presently, six cars had pulled up outside the bourgeois store, and men and women dressed in different styles came walking through the doors. The sales assistants who were chatting among themselves broke apart and sauntered over to greet the customers. What surprised them the most was that these customers had chosen jewelry pieces from high-end collections. Not even ten minutes later, two of these customers left with millions worth of jewelry, and within half an hour, the sales for the store shot up to a staggering eight million. Miss Tillman, great news! There was a group of customers who came by the shop earlier, and they took an interest in the items from the main collection. Our sales broke through to eight million just now. We'll have to get more inventory from headquarters pronto. What? Anastasia was so stunned that she stood up. No way. Am I really that lucky? That afternoon, she and the manager worked out two separate strategies in light of the sudden spike in sales. Given that the shop still had gift items in stock, they put up a sign outside the door to promote a giveaway activity. The second plan they came up with was for Anastasia to pay 30000 out of her own pocket for a one-month advertisement in all the major shopping malls. At 4.00 p.m., Anastasia left work to pick Jared up from school. The moment she got off the car, she instinctively turned to sweep her gaze across the parking lot next to the kindergarten. She immediately noticed a familiar Rolls Royce parked at the side, and the license plate was just as unique as the vehicle itself. The only person who could own this car was Elliot. Much to her frustration, the man had come to pick Jared up from school again, and she began to wonder what he was trying to prove. She was still simmering in disgruntlement when she saw Jared skipping out of the school gates in her direction while holding onto Elliot's hand. Mommy, mommy. He greeted as he bounded up to her. Anastasia beamed and put out her arms as if to catch him. Mommy, Mr. Pressgrave said he's going to buy us dinner tonight, Jared informed cheerily. Upon hearing this, she looked up at Elliot and waved her hand as she declined the offer. No, that won't be necessary. I can manage dinner now that my hand is all better. You should get going if you have the important things to attend to, President Pressgrave. I don't. Let's go back to your place for dinner, Elliot suggested. When he saw the tired look on her face, he added empathetically, 
We can always go out for dinner if you're tired, I'm not. Besides, I prefer cooking my own meals anyway, Anastasia replied, not wanting this man to spoil Jaredin's palate with expensive food. Very well then, we'll go pick up groceries together. With that, he carried Jared in his arms and headed for his car. Anastasia was just about to leave with them when a mother rushed up to her and said enviously, You're so lucky, Anastasia. You have such a rich and handsome husband who helps you out with your kid. He's nothing like that deadbeat husband of mine. I don't even remember the last time I saw him around the house. Anastasia forced out a smile, rendered speechless by this. The mother went on to say, I've never seen anyone as good-looking as your husband. I think he's far better looking than all those celebrities out there. Be careful, though you have to keep an eye on a handsome man like him. After all, you never know if a woman is lurking in the shadows waiting to pounce on him. The smile on Anastasia's face stiffened, but she nodded and said graciously, Got it. I'll keep that in mind. Jared was already in his car seat by the time she got into the vehicle. Right now, she was somewhat torn, and she wasn't sure if it was a good thing for her and Elliot to go on like this. She cooked up a few dishes for dinner that evening, and both Elliot and Jared polished their plates clean. They even devoured the oxtail stew that she was sure she had messed up. Jared liked going down to the communal playground after dinner, and while Anastasia was distracted, Elliot decided to take him there. It was 8.30 p.m. by the time Anastasia was done clearing the dishes and tidying up around the house. She brought a glass of water out to the balcony, but just as she was culping it down, she suddenly realized, with no small amount of exasperation, that she was drinking out of the same glass Elliot had used earlier. Chapter 208 Anastasia had been meaning to get disposable cups, but she always forgot about them. To date, she wasn't sure how many times she had drunk out of the same glass as Elliot. She was pulled out of her thoughts when her phone suddenly rang. She reached for it and put the call through after glancing at the caller ID. Hello, Miss Shastain, Miss Tillman, I've come bearing good news. We rounded up the sales for today at 15 million. While the customers didn't come in droves, they each bought more than a million's worth of jewelry. Never have I seen such staggering business since I started working here. Surprise filled Anastasia's pretty eyes when she heard this. She wondered how these customers came upon her shop in the first place. She was sure that she didn't rally her friends or family for support, and she had yet to advertise the shop and the products. Could these just be customers who happened to drop by the shop? It went without saying that she was elated by how things had turned out. She would like to think that fate was being kind to her. As the night breeze picked up, she suddenly remembered that they were in the depths of autumn now. To think that she had returned to this country in August, and in the blink of an eye, November was right around the corner. Far too many things had happened in the last few months, the biggest of which was how Elliot had integrated himself into her life. He had shown up without warning like a storm no one could anticipate, and he was so demanding that he would not stand for rejection on her part. The most frustrating thing about him, perhaps, was how he could make her feel like she was being devoured in flames, yet she didn't mind it at all. She wanted him to do all those things to her. She wanted such pleasure to crawl under her skin and consume her. Am I truly so desperate to feel a man's touch? She started to wonder if her loneliness had made her feel such primal urges whenever they were alone, and she also questioned if the same would apply if she was with another man. If that were the case, it would only go to show that she was lonely and that this had nothing to do with Elliot's own charisma. The thought of this, she suddenly became inspired to find a decent man that she liked and have a fling with him. It could be a platonic fling, and it would be sufficient to distract her from the effects that Elliot had on her. That way, she wouldn't spend every waking moment thinking about that man. She was already terrified that she might become overly dependent on him one day. When it was around 9.00 p.m., Elia returned to the apartment with Jared in tow. The little boy was already drenched in his own sweat, but he was clearly enamored with playtime, for he turned to look at Elliot seriously as he said, Mr. Presgrave, 
You have to bring me to the playground again tomorrow. I want to try out the monkey bars. I promise I will, Elliot said with a gentle smile. Anastasia walked up to them and pointed out, Jared, you can't have Mr. Presgrave coming over every day just to play with you. He's a busy man, and it isn't right for us to take up his time, okay? She had only just said this when she felt a sharp look being thrown her way. Elliot was a sensitive man, and while she had kept her words vague, he could still pick out the implication behind them. She was trying to stop him from getting too close to Jared. Really? All right then, Jared replied with an obedient nod. Anastasia took his hand and said, Come on, go get your pajamas before I give you a bath. The little boy went into his room to do as he was told. Presently, Anastasia turned around to see that Elliot had taken the full glass of water she had poured out earlier, and he was drinking it thirstily. She blushed and decided that she was going to have to get him a mug if these visits were going to be frequent. President Presgrave, it's late, and you should be getting home, she reminded firmly but courteously. Why do you keep calling me President Presgrave? You can just call me by my name when we're alone, he said unhappily, not at all liking how she kept up formalities with him. There was a steely look in her eyes as she insisted and said, I will not. As far as I'm concerned, you are my superior, and this is the only way I see you, Elliot found her exasperating at times. He couldn't lecture nor argue with her, and he couldn't even be too harsh with his words for fear that she would only retaliate even more passive-aggressively. However, for some reason, he was extraordinarily patient with her even when she was snapping at him or being stubborn. In that case, I'll be leaving now. Give me a call if you need anything, he said. When he sauntered over to her, she felt her chest tighten, but thankfully he didn't do anything to her and merely opened the door to leave. When the door fell shut behind him, she let out a sigh of relief. She went on to bathe Jared and tucked him into bed with a bedtime story. At last, he fell into an easy sleep in her arms. It was only during moments like these when her son had fallen asleep that she could stare at his little face and let her mind wander for a bit. Chapter 209 After all, her son had a handsome face. Why does he look like him? Can't he look like me? Anastasia mumbled in dismay. Why would her son take after Elliot's looks? Meanwhile, the poor child didn't know that his own mother was complaining about him. After sending her son to school the next morning, Anastasia didn't return to the company. Instead, she went to the shop. Just as she got out of the car, she saw a row of luxurious cars parked in front of bourgeois jewelry atelier. The few ateliers next to it had no business, while bourgeois flagship store was currently flooded with customers. Not only that, every customer who came out of the shop carried a bag. Anastasia wanted to look for the shop manager, Miss Shastain, but the latter was so occupied that Anastasia couldn't even spot her. In fact, she was busy transferring the products, and they were short of many high-end pieces. Therefore, Anastasia could only return to the company first. When she arrived, Anastasia saw Erica sitting in the lobby, but the latter pulled a cold expression and pretended not to know her. With that, Kay walked to the elevator. The moment she arrived at the office, Felicia quickly came up to her. Good job, Anastasia. Your family and friends have been a huge support. Felicia bent down slightly and praised in a whisper. Huh, Anastasia didn't know what she meant by that. I heard that the shop you selected is doing really well. Although it's only been a few days into the month, our sales have exceeded to million. Anastasia was a little surprised, so she bit her lip and denied, they are not my friends and family though, Alice's team has only accumulated 4 to 5 million sales. I'm sure you'll be securing the associate director's position this time. I am just doing my best. I'm not trying to aim for the associate director's position or anything, replied Anastasia helplessly. She just wanted to get her salary increment. If that position didn't come with a salary increment, she wouldn't have even applied. Alice pushed the door open and entered the office with a long face shortly after Felicia left. Once she arrived, she said mockingly, Anastasia, didn't we agree not to depend on our family and friends? Why did you do it? 
Anastasia blinked her eyes at her question. Isn't she using the same method as well? How dare she accuse me? I'm not depending on my family and friends. They are just normal customers, ha. Huh? Who are you trying to fool? Some of the customers who went to your shop are major shareholders of Pressgrave Group. There were also some high-ranking managers there. Did you think I wouldn't find out that you used your connections to bring in President Pressgrave's family and friends? Anastasia's mind instantly exploded. As she stared blankly at Alice for a few seconds, she was rendered speechless. Now, she finally understood why there was a large number of customers at her shop spending millions. Did all of them come from Elliot? You promised a fair competition, Anastasia. Aren't you afraid of being laughed at for cheating? If you call this cheating, why can you do it but I can't, Anastasia retorted. You, Alice huffed as a shade of crimson crept up her neck and her face. Anastasia didn't bother arguing with her anymore. Since Alice wasn't particularly fond of her as well, Anastasia stood up and said, I have to work now. Please leave, you will regret this. Alice spat before stomping out the door. Once Alice left, Anastasia wrapped her arms around her head in frustration. Why did Elliot help her? She didn't want to owe him any favors. With that, Anastasia dialed the number to Elliot's office, but no one picked up. Instead of giving up, Anastasia called Elliot's personal number. This time, the call was answered. Hello? His baritone and husky voice sounded as charming as ever. However, that didn't affect Anastasia's impolite tone as she scolded in frustration, Are you the one helping me pull customers to my shop, Elliot Pressgrave? Do you think I have so much free time on my hands? Elliot tossed the question back at her. Don't lie to me. Someone recognized the customers that went to the store and said they were shareholders and managers from your company, Anastasia exposed him mercilessly. After remaining silent for a while, Elliot uttered indifferently, that's their choice. It has nothing to do with me. Elliot was obviously lying, for he didn't want to admit that he had helped her. Once again, Anastasia was... Chapter 210 Although Anastasia didn't know what to say, she was honestly moved. Thank you, but I hope that you won't ask them to visit my shop anymore. I've given up the position of associate director, she sighed. Why is that so? Elliot inquired anxiously. I just want to focus on designing. I don't have any management skills, so I don't want to hold the company back. Why aren't you confident with your skills? Don't you want to get the salary increment? There is a limit to my ability and I only deserve my current salary. Thank you for your concern, Mr. Pressgrave. You may ask your family and friends to stop coming by the shop. Anastasia hung up the call after saying the last sentence. She breathed a sigh of relief before calling Felicia to tell her about her decision, and the latter respected her wish to do so. After spending the past few months with Anastasia, Felicia came to realize that she was a straightforward and honest girl. Hence, Felicia liked the girl a lot. Meanwhile, someone started to spread rumors about this exact topic at the front desk and it instantly became the talk of the entire company. I heard that Anastasia will become the associate director of the Department of Design this time, said a lady at the front desk who had just heard the gossip. Why is it her? Erica immediately leaned over and joined the conversation. I heard that the three designers in the Department of Design are competing for the position this time. They have each selected a store and will be competing based on this month's sales turnover. I also heard that all of them have received support from their family and friends, but Anastasia went to a whole new level. Someone else inquired, where did her connections come from? Who else could there be? It's President Pressgrave, of course. He has personally asked his upper management to visit Anastasia's shop. Wow, the other ladies at the front desk were so amazed that they let out surprised gasps, but Erica's face was pale. If she hadn't come to the company today, she wouldn't even have known that Anastasia had been hooking up with Elliot Pressgrave. Now that Elliot wanted to help Anastasia get promoted and receive a salary increment, he was willing to suppress his pride and ask his upper management to support her. How close were they that he was willing to do that for her? 
Erica wasn't going to believe that Anastasia never slept with Elliot. What a shameless person Anastasia is. How could she seduce the president? Erica scoffed. The other ladies at the front desk admired her courage. After all, no one in the company dared to scold Anastasia, let alone offend her. Hey, Emph, she's such a filthy woman. Does she even deserve President Pressgrave? What a nasty woman, Erica spat through gritted teeth in desperation to curse the hell out of Anastasia. Erica, why do you say so? Tell us about it. How do you know that Anastasia is a filthy woman? She has an illegitimate child, and that child was born five years ago as a result of sleeping with another man. She has worked at a club, served customers, and slept with them just to study abroad. She was kicked out of her house eventually, though. How do you know all these? She's the daughter of my father's ex-wife. Erica decided not to hide her identity anymore. What? Everyone at the front desk exclaimed in shock. That was a juicy scoop from Erica. No wonder Anastasia was capable of getting support from President Pressgrave. This all came from the practice of seducing men five years when she saw that the front desk ladies were intrigued by her words, Erica vividly recounted Anastasia's past to them with exaggeration. She mentioned Anastasia being called Princess of Abyss, most popular hostess, and whatever terms she could think of at that time. The ladies at the front desk were serial gossipers and they quietly whispered to every person they encountered about Anastasia's past. By that evening, Anastasia's reputation was ruined once again. While everyone was curious about how Anastasia managed to pull Elliot's connections, most of them assumed that she had slept with him. Now that they heard about her scandal five years ago, everything seemed to make sense. Just like that, Anastasia was known as the woman of easy virtue in the company. However, Anastasia, who was in her office, didn't know what was going on at all. When Alice heard that Anastasia had withdrawn from the competition, she was even more motivated to secure the position of associate director. Meanwhile, a luxurious car was parked in the garage. Ray followed Elliot as they took the elevator, but when it stopped at the sixth floor of the Department of Design, he turned to Ray and said, Head up first, Ray nodded in response. Just as Elliot strode out of the elevator and was about to look for Anastasia, he passed by the pantry and overheard a conversation behind the glass window. Chapter 211 The two female staff chatted animatedly, not realizing that the president was right behind the glass window. Is it true that Miss Tillman worked as a hostess five years ago? That question made Elliot halt in his steps. He furrowed his brows while listening to their conversation. Of course it's true. Erica from the front desk is Anastasia's stepsister, and she said so herself. I heard that Anastasia couldn't afford to study design overseas, so she went to a club and worked as a hostess. She was eventually hauled out of the house by her father, though, in that case, where did her son come from? How could you not get pregnant from selling your body? If you're unlucky and meet any customer who has a weird kink, it's easy to get pregnant. When he heard those words, Elliot felt as if something had pierced his chest. His eyes darkened, and the aura around him immediately turned icy cold. Was that part of Anastasia's past that she wasn't willing to talk about? Was that Jared's birth story? Every time they talked about her past, she would speak cautiously. It seemed that she wanted to hide most of her past. Which department are you to from? Leave the company on your own after lunch. Elliot hated people who gossiped during working hours. Moreover, these ladies happened to cross him while he was in a bad mood. Ah, President Pressgrave. The two staff quickly covered their mouths, and it seemed like their souls had flown out of their bodies. However, before they could regain their senses, Elliot walked away. The two exchanged glances with each other, and they felt like they were going to faint due to the sudden escalation of events. Were they fired just like that? Meanwhile, the glass door to Anastasia's office successfully blocked all the chaos outside. Immune to all distractions, Anastasia held her iPad in one hand while holding a pen in the other, and she sketched several designs according to her inspiration. Just as she was immersed in her drawings, someone pushed the door open and disturbed her. Anastasia hated being interrupted. As she raised her head, 
she shot daggers at the uninvited man who was walking in with a long face. After putting the iPad aside, she then questioned, is something up? Elliot walked over to her desk and propped both his hands on the table while staring into her eyes. He demanded, tell me the truth about your past. Anastasia, it doesn't matter what it was like, and I promise I won't judge. Anastasia thought that he was out of his mind. As she folded her arms in front of her chest, she leaned back in her chair and asked, which part of my past do I have to confess to you? Elliot's expression changed slightly. He wanted her to leave the past behind and walk out of the dark. Only then could she face the future positively, accept him, and be with him. He had to help her out of her misery. He didn't care about her past actions or whether she used to have any relationships with other men, for he was willing to brush everything off. To him, all that mattered was their future together. I heard that you worked as a hostess five years ago to fund your studies abroad, and you always went in and out of the club to serve customers. I also heard that you had Jared around that time, am correct? You even got kicked out of the house by your father. Are all of these true? Elliot questioned in one go. Anastasia's mind buzzed continuously. Other than Erica, who else would possibly make up such a cruel story? Anastasia's face darkened before she slammed the desk with both hands. This startled Elliot, and he looked at her with a shocked expression, not knowing what had gotten into her. Erica Tillman, you little be chi chi, Anastasia rarely cursed, but at this moment, she didn't bother to be polite anymore. She just wanted to give Erica a good scolding. Meanwhile, Elliot's eyes widened as he watched her. Anastasia got up and left through the door, leaving a puzzled Elliot standing there by himself. Once the elevator arrived on the first floor, Anastasia made her way to the front desk while exuding an intimidating aura. Erica was playing with her phone, but when she saw Anastasia walking over, she got up guiltily. By the time Anastasia was right in front of her, Erica wrapped her arms around her head and warned, Go on if you dare to hit me. I'll tell Dad about it. Erica Tillman, I'm giving you two choices. 1. Leave the company and go home. 2. Take full responsibility for your words and let me slap you in the face. Are you afraid that I'll expose you? Isn't it true that you got laid by a host five years ago? Erica shouted. Chapter 212 Anastasia's face instantly turned pale. Then, she picked up a folder on the desk and threw it at Erica's face. Ah, uh, it hurt so bad that Erica cried out in pain. The sharp corner of the folder scratched her face, leaving an obvious scar. Ouch, my face, my face. Erica cherished her face dearly. Even though blood wasn't oozing out of the scratch, she felt devastated. When Elliot came out of the elevator, he realized he was too late. Anastasia was already teaching Erica a lesson. Stop it, Anastasia, ordered Elliot in a low voice. The woman needed to be disciplined sometimes, and Elliot feared that she would ruin her own reputation by going too far. The other ladies at the front desk had been watching the fun, but once they saw the president, they shivered and quickly retreated to the back. Nonetheless, Anastasia ignored the man as he came to persuade her. She stared at Erica and said, do you swear that every insult you've spread about me is real? Yes, I swear, Erica yelled. All right, go on and swear that every word you've said is true. If there's even one fabricated lie, you'll be hit by a car once you exit the building. Anastasia was so furious that she couldn't behave rationally anymore. Larika dared not do so. Just like everyone else, she was afraid of karma. What if the heavens punished her for this? Upon hearing that, Elliot stared at Erica coldly. When he saw that she stuttered for a long time and didn't dare to swear on her life, he realized that she must have made up those stories about Anastasia. You don't dare to swear on your life, do you? You ruined my face. I'm going to tell mom and dad. Erica instantly held on to this matter. After all, her face was still burning from the scratch just now. Erica Tillman, just resign on your own and head to the HR department right now. We don't need people who talk nonsense in the company. Elliot's cold gaze swept across Erica. The woman shuddered in response. 
She glanced at the handsome man in front of her as she couldn't believe that he had fired her on the spot. That bitch, Anastasia Tillman. Erica scolded in her heart. She was going to seek revenge on her one day. After grabbing her bag, she stomped out of the lobby while feeling aggrieved. She didn't even bother going through her resignation process with the HR department. Anastasia was like a fiery rose with thorns all over her body. When her gaze swept across the other ladies at the front desk, they quivered in panic and fear. After all, they were afraid that they would get involved too. What if Elliot decided to fire them all? Miss Tillman, we didn't talk bad about you. That's right. Erica was the only one who spread the rumors. We, of course, Anastasia knew that they were also involved in disseminating such rumors. However, since it was all Erica's fault, she didn't want to say anything more. Instead, she turned on her heels and left the building because she needed some time alone. Elliot squinted his eyes and immediately followed her out of the building, fearing that she would do something unthinkable as she wasn't in her right mind. Indeed, Anastasia wasn't completely herself. She raised her head to look at the green pedestrian light across her, but just as she stepped onto the pedestrian crossing, the lights instantly turned red. Fortunately, a strong arm gripped her and pulled her back to the side of the road. A frustrated and angry voice sounded beside her ears as Elliot yelled, Are you trying to die? In response, she looked up at the man while mocking herself, Didn't you believe their nonsense too? Worked as a hostess and have entertained many men. I'm a filthy woman, so don't touch me if you don't want to dirty your hands, Elliot held both her thin shoulders while narrowing his eyes. Even though he knew that she was just saying that out of anger, he was enraged upon hearing those words. He then scolded, You're not allowed to give up on yourself. All of a sudden, Anastasia was spewing nonsense in front of him. Her clear and round eyes widened as she uttered seriously, I am filthy. Other men have touched me, so just go on and judge me however you want to. Before she could finish her sentence, she felt a large palm holding the back of her head. Another hand was clutching her waist, and the person's minty lips covered her own. Elliot kissed her. They were currently standing beside the road full of traffic where people came and went. With that, Elliot forced Anastasia into a kiss. Chapter 213 Rue and my daughter blood gushed into her brain as a shade of crimson crept up her cheeks, and Anastasia froze because of his actions. All she felt was the hot kiss that Elliot left on her lips. In order to show her that he wasn't going to look down on her, he dived in for a long and desperate kiss. Anastasia's mind went blank as she let him take control of her. When Elliot let go of her, he pressed his forehead against hers and uttered in a low and hoarse voice, Listen up, Anastasia. I don't despise you, so you can't despise me too. I don't care about your past. I just want to be in your future. At that moment, Anastasia was blushing uncontrollably. She shoved him away in anger and glared at him. Was he insane? They were at the entrance of the company. If anyone saw them, she would never be able to clear up this misunderstanding. I'm warning you, Elliot. Anastasia suddenly threatened. You'd better not touch me or else. You'll marry me, Elliot smirked, finishing her sentence on behalf of Anastasia. The woman stared at him, dumbfounded. She couldn't think of any words to refute him for a while, so she turned around and headed toward another commercial street. This time, Elliot didn't chase after her anymore. He had calmed down by then, and he believed that she wouldn't have any thoughts of suicide anymore. After all, she loved her son far too much to do that. On the other hand, Anastasia sat down in a cafe with her face flushed. No one saw us earlier, right? She was silently praying that no one had seen them kiss. Otherwise, she wouldn't be able to work in the office anymore. Elliot always took advantage of her regardless of the occasion, and he was a terrible person for that. When her cup of iced coffee was served, Anastasia took a small sip. They were currently going through late autumn and November, so a cup of iced coffee was enough to calm her nerves down. Her sudden outburst of anger earlier was due to the accumulation of resentment she had toward Erica since she was a child, and she couldn't take it any longer. Now that she thought about it, 
she didn't have to be upset. After all, she was only hurting herself. Her phone rang at that moment, notifying Anastasia of a call from her father. She never expected to hurt Erica with the folder she had thrown at her. Hi, Dad. Anastasia picked up the call. What happened to you and Erica, Anastasia? Did you to fight? Frances inquired in an accusing tone. Yes, and I accidentally injured her. Anastasia apologized. At that moment, Naomi's angry voice sounded from the other end as she spoke. Anastasia Tillman, are you trying to ruin my daughter? Are you happy now that her face is scratched? When she heard that, Anastasia furrowed her brows. Was her dad at home? You've always bullied my daughter, Erica. Why does she have such a hard life? She hasn't even been at work for two days, yet you've already hurt her. Don't cross the line, Anastasia. Naomi sounded exasperated. A speechless Anastasia rolled her eyes. Naomi was acting like the guilty party who was filing the suit and pretending to be pitiful. You should ask your daughter how she slandered me at work first, Anastasia retorted without backing down. It isn't like you don't know Erica's temper. She's just straightforward and likes to be nosy sometimes. That doesn't give you the right to dismiss her from her job and hurt her. If the scratch leaves a scar on her face, I'm never going to forgive you, said Naomi as she huffed, not forgetting to justify her daughter's actions. All right, that's enough. Their fight isn't that serious, Frances reassured Naomi as the woman sobbed. If there's nothing else, I'll be hanging up. Goodbye, Dad. Anastasia had had enough of Naomi. She was pretending to be pitiful in front of her dad, and she wanted to let Anastasia know her place in Frances' heart. Back at the office, Elliot suppressed the gossip about Anastasia and fired three employees. In just one day, he had fired Anastasia's stepsister as well as two other female staff. His actions made the other staff panic, and no one dared to talk bad about Anastasia anymore. When the woman returned to the office, no one dared to utter a word in front of her, but curious eyes were still locked on her behind Anastasia's back. Seeing how President Pressgrave had defended her, was she really in a relationship with him? After today's incident, that rumor seemed to have become reality. Chapter 214 Be careful, Haley. how nice would it be to sleep with President Pressgrave. This was the inner voice of most female staff. I'm so envious that Elliot Pressgrave gets to have Anastasia Tillman. Meanwhile, this was the inner voice of most male staff. Anastasia sat in her office with a headache, and all of her inspiration had dissipated by then. Even more so, her mind was filled with the kiss that happened on the streets earlier. Was Elliot just repaying her kindness, or did he really like her? Back at Tillman residence, Erica was staring at her swollen face in the mirror as she gnashed her teeth in anger. Anastasia merely wanted to ruin her face. If it weren't for her luck, Erica might have suffered a huge cut on her face. I won't let you off so easily, Anastasia. I will make you pay back double for today's humiliation, hissed Erica. Once she was done scolding Anastasia, she picked up her phone and dialed Haley's number. Hello, Erica. Haley was as friendly as ever. Do you know what I went through today, Haley? My face was almost ruined by Anastasia. Haley was extremely surprised when she heard that. She hurriedly asked, what happened between the both of you? Let's not mention it. While Erica said not to mention it, she proceeded to explain the entire incident. However, she didn't mention that she only went to work at Bourgeois because of Elliot. Instead, she simply said that she needed a job. What? You went to Bourgeois to work for two days? Haley was shocked, but she was even more relieved that she hadn't gone to the atelier for the past two days. I just wanted to gain some experience there, but I didn't expect Anastasia to treat me like an eyesore. Not only did she ruin my face, she even took the chance to fire me, said Erica as she huffed in exasperation. At the same time, she smiled proudly while uttering, of course, I didn't let her have it all. I told the whole company that she worked as a hostess and entertained customers in a club, and she even got laid by a host five years ago. The whole company is treating her like a joke now. However, Haley was anxious to hear that, so she inquired tentatively, 
Do you remember what the host looked like? What about his stage name? Weren't you the one who arranged it? How would I know? Anyway, you should have selected an ugly host for her in the first place. That way, she'd be disgusted to death. Why did you even get her a host? What a waste of money. Erica had been partying like a wild animal that night, and it was Haley's idea all along. She was just watching the fun. Haley heaved a sigh of relief upon hearing that. She figured that the heavens had helped Anastasia out that fateful night five years ago. She assumed that the host had run away with the 2000 he received from Haley when he saw another man in the private room. As for why Elliot had shown up in the private room she booked, she guessed he had probably been drunk and entered the wrong room. What a bummer! Anastasia slept with Elliot and even gave birth to his son. Haley desperately wished that she had been in Anastasia's position that night. Haley, what have you been up to these days? We haven't gone shopping in a long time, Erica complained. When your face heals, I'll treat you to a nice meal. Haley had to maintain her relationship with Erica, who knew she might be of use to Haley one day. Okay, I'll wait for your call. Erica was a simple-minded person. Since she had her mother's protection, she wasn't a shameful woman. However, just like her mother, she was not a kind person either. Haley, who was in her luxurious mansion, put down her phone. At that moment, her mind was already full of schemes. How much would Elliot despise Anastasia after knowing that she worked as a hostess before? She couldn't help but call May in hopes of knowing how much Anastasia would be judged, but she didn't expect to hear that Elliot fired three employees because of that woman. All of a sudden, she nearly choked on her anger. What? Elliot fired Erica on the spot? Haley couldn't believe that Erica met Elliot without telling her about it. That's right. Two nosy staff who gossiped about Anastasia were also fired on the same day. You'd better be careful, Haley. Anastasia is a cunning woman. She managed to enchant President Pressgrave with her tactics. Although Haley knew that May cared for her sincerely, her words sounded extremely harsh to the former. Chapter 215 Elliot's girlfriend is here. President Pressgrave just left my place last night. I'm the only woman sleeping with him every night, so don't worry about it. Haley couldn't help but lie and create a false impression that she and Elliot were very much in love with each other. Fortunately, May believed every word she said. The latter thought that she was Elliot's real girlfriend while Anastasia was just a shameless mistress. After hanging up the phone, Haley was so enraged that she threw her pillow away. Anastasia Tillman, why are you still haunting me? Why do you have to circle around Elliot all the time? I must ruin your reputation and make your life miserable. Meanwhile, in the office of Pressgrave Group, Elliot came back to settle some work. As he sat in front of his desk, there was a pile of documents waiting to be signed. Yet, he was daydreaming. At that moment, he was extremely eager to find out what had happened to Anastasia back then. He wanted to know the bee star who slept with her so that he could figure out how to help her in any way possible. As long as Anastasia opened her mouth, he would definitely find that jerk and make him pay for his actions. Suddenly, Elliot thought of someone Haley knew exactly what happened to Anastasia back then so he could perhaps fish some information out of her. Elliot also realized that after he met Anastasia, he no longer thought about Haley anymore. He had only given Haley material compensation, but it still struck him how Haley didn't appear as much in his thoughts anymore. He used to recall the night five years ago when poor Haley was bawling in front of him. When he thought about how bad of a scar he had left on her, he blamed himself for it. Now that Haley accepted his material compensation while he did everything in his power to satisfy her current situation, he could finally put down the stone in his heart. With that, Elliot made a call to Haley. Hello, Elliot. Is that you? Haley sounded enthusiastic on the other end. Yes, it's me. Are you free tonight? I'll treat you to a meal, sure. I'm free. Should I come and meet you? I'll give you a call later, okay. I've missed you so much, Elliot. Haley grabbed the opportunity to confess her feelings. Okay, see you tonight. With that, Elliot hung up the phone. 
He was aware of Haley's admiration for him, but he couldn't accept her feelings. All he felt for her was guilt, and there was nothing more. Then Elia made a call to Anastasia. It took her a while to pick up the phone. Hello, do you need help with anything? Anastasia sounded as cold as ice. Although she knew that Elliot was calling her, she still sounded businesslike. Meanwhile, the man furrowed his sharp brows upon hearing her answer. Indeed, Anastasia knew how to grab every chance to provoke him with her words. I have something going on tonight, so I won't be eating at your place, uttered Elliot in a low voice. This time, Anastasia sounded a little happier. Okay, sure. Can't you talk to me in a friendlier way? Asked Elliot in frustration. Don't you know that it is common courtesy to respect others first for them to respect you? Anastasia mocked. After all, someone who forcefully kissed and took advantage of her wasn't worthy of her respect. After staying silent for a few seconds, Elliot replied, Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Anastasia hung up the phone after that, leaving Elliot stunned. He had always been the first one to end their calls, so he didn't expect her to hang up first. At 2.00 p.m., Haley booked a whole team of professional makeup artists and stylists to prepare her for dinner. Although it was just a meal with Elliot, she had to make sure she looked presentable. She wanted to wear the prettiest makeup and the most beautiful dress, and every detail had to be perfectly refined. Not only that, Haley wanted to brag in front of Anastasia and let her know that she was having dinner with Elliot. Since there were not many chances for Haley to show off, she wanted to grab this opportunity. At around 4.00 p.m., Haley arrived at Bourgeois. She purposely went to Anastasia's office, attracting all the eyes of the other staff in the process. Goodness, isn't that President Pressgrave's real girlfriend? Is she here for Anastasia? Is this a meeting between love rivals? Will they start a fight? Just as Anastasia packed her bag and was about to pick up her son, Grace suddenly barged in and stammered, Anastasia, P. President Pressgrave's girlfriend is here. Chapter 216 The boy's father, Isilio Tanastasia, looked up to find Haley walking up behind Grace with a cold face. Just then, Haley shot a glare at the assistant and flaunted her status. Get out, she said with a plain snort. Grace stuck her tongue out in response and left. Meanwhile, Anastasia sneered to herself as she watched their interaction unfold. Who did Haley think she was to order her assistant around? Please remember who you are, Haley. This is bourgeois, and the employees here are not maids you can order around as you please, Anastasia warned with a quirked brow. However, Haley simply dismissed her as she sat down on the couch and crossed her legs. Anastasia, why did you hit Erica? This is between me and my family. You have no part in this, Anastasia glanced coldly at her. What do you mean I have no part in this? Erica is my best friend, and it's only right that I defend her. Just because your mother saved Elliot, don't assume that you can use this debt to behave unruly, Anastasia. Served your mother's cheap life right to die for Elliot, Haley attacked mercilessly. Anastasia's pupils shook with rage, for Haley had crossed the line. Anybody could talk shti about her, but nobody was allowed to do that to her loved ones. You'd better shut your mouth, Haley. Otherwise, I'll skin you alive, Anastasia shot right up, beyond furious. It was a pity that Haley had indeed come to anger Anastasia. After all, she knew that Amelia was Anastasia's taboo. Some people are destined to live a short life, and your mother was one of them. Haley was practically digging her heart out. With that, Anastasia came out from behind her desk. Sometimes a hand was more useful than words. Get out. Get the hell out. Anastasia roared as she threw the cup on her table at Haley, who dodged reflexively. How dare you throw things at me, Anastasia? Haley yelled, evidently pissed off by this. If you stay a second longer, I will even kill you, said Anastasia as she growled. However, Haley blurted, if you dare kill me, who's going to look after your son? His gigolo of a father? Haley's words took Anastasia aback and she glared daggers at Haley. She was so livid that she choked on her words. On the other hand, 
Haley sneered as though she suddenly had leverage over Anastasia. Oh, that reminds me. I think I still remember his name and face. Why don't I help your son find his father? The guy should know that he has a son after that night. Don't you think so? Haley's words were like a vortex that sucked out all of Anastasia's strength in one second. I dare you, Haley. Anastasia looked at the woman while gritting her teeth. What? Are you scared now, Anastasia? Are you afraid that your baby boy will be taken away from you? In that case, you'd better not give me your attitude. I have a date with Elliot tonight, and I will give you a piece of my mind if you pour water on me. Anastasia suddenly felt a pang in her heart. She then looked at Haley, who was all dolled up. She's seeing Elliot tonight, huh? No wonder he said he isn't available. He has a date with Haley. We'll stay out of each other's business from now on, Haley. I can overlook what you did to me back then, but don't cause me any more trouble. Otherwise, I swear I'll fight you to the death, Anastasia warned. Oh, have you forgiven me? You'd better thank me too. How would you have had your son if it weren't for me? Haley's shameless behavior made Anastasia close her eyes and suppress her desire to kill this woman. A moment later, she looked coldly at Haley. Stop bugging me, or I won't play nice anymore. Haley suddenly turned cold as well. All right. As long as you leave Elliot, I promise I won't ask that Jagolo to come to you. However, if you continue to pester Elliot, I'll make sure your son meets his Jagolo of a father. When that time comes, you better pray that he doesn't take your son away. I'll call the police right away if he dares to show himself. Have you forgotten that you're also responsible for what happened back then? Anastasia wasn't going down with a fight either, and she didn't want Haley to think she was an easy target. After all, people like Haley would only continue to bully if they knew their victim was a weakling. Anastasia's threat worked, for Haley began panicking. After all, she was only intimidating Anastasia, and there wasn't any Jagolo at all the real father of her child was Elliot. Chapter 217 I hope you can tell me the truth, all right, it's a deal. You stay away from Elliot, and I won't tell anyone what happened back then. Otherwise, your son will know how he came to be. Even if you call the police and have the Jagolo arrested, he is still your son's father, and he'll have a Jagolo of a father who even served time in prison. Haha. <laughs> Haley couldn't help cackling as she spoke. What a joke. Get the hell out of here. Anastasia roared. Fine. It's almost time for my date with Elliot anyway. You'd better not bother us tonight, and I dare you to ruin our night with work. We will be very busy the entire night, after all. I'm sure you know just how good of a stamina Elliot has. Haley deliberately lied to disgust Anastasia, and she succeeded. With that, she headed out with a smug face. Inside the office, Anastasia slumped back on her chair weakly. Her body trembled involuntarily as all sorts of emotions stirred within her, and she felt absolutely awful. Haley knew her best, and that woman knew precisely where to strike. After all, her mother and son were the people she loved most. Elliot, on the other hand, wasn't somebody to her, yet it still did some damage. She thought he was a B-starred for dating Haley while kissing her with the same pair of lips that he had used to kiss the other woman. She could even picture what this man and Haley would be doing in bed, just imagining it had already suffocated her. With that, Anastasia decided she would stay far away from Elliot. She would never allow him to make a move on her ever again. Meanwhile, just as Haley returned home in a rush, she got a call from Daniel. Alas, she had her hopes up for nothing, for she thought Elliot would pick her up himself. After picking Haley up, Daniel snuck a few peeks at her, not daring to look her straight in the eye. It was only reasonable that he was somewhat fearful of her after what had happened last time. Then again, he felt truly bad for the woman after making out with her. He felt bad that she couldn't do anything but only hope that President Pressgrave would visit her in this lavish mansion like she was a caged bird unwilling to be free, waiting for its owner to show it some love. Daniel, am I pretty? Haley asked out of the blue. Daniel was somewhat jumpy within, 
for he was genuinely afraid whenever she called him Daniel in such a coquettish tone. You look stunning, Miss Seymour, he praised. Do you think President Pressgrave will like me? Yeah, he definitely will, Daniel knew he had to lie. He worked closely with Elliot, and he could tell that the president fancied the designer working in Bourgeois and not Haley. Though it was a lie, it brightened up Haley's mood. With that, she took her compact mirror out to retouch her makeup, pleased with how she looked that night. In fact, she hoped Elliot that would take her back to his place so that she could become the woman who drove his loneliness away. Meanwhile, the car continued its journey to the high-end restaurant. By the time Haley arrived, Elliot was already waiting inside the private room. The moment she opened the door, her heart pounded wildly, for he'd be able to capture all of her attention and have her lose herself whenever she saw him. Elliot, Haley called out affectionately as she sat across from him. Elliot dipped his head in response. Then, he asked a server to come in to take their order. Since he was a gentleman, he let Haley decide what they were going to eat that night, and like a fish craving for water, she viewed Elliot's every bit of gentlemanliness as his love for her. She believed Elliot surely had feelings for her. Unfortunately, the vamp named Anastasia had lured him away. I finished ordering our dishes, Elliot. Why don't you see if there's anything you'd like to order? I'm good. Just bring the dishes over. Elliot hadn't come to eat. Instead, he was here to find out what he could about Anastasia from Haley. The air grew silent for a while, and Haley fidgeted around nervously for some time. She tried to get Elliot's attention, but he would either look out the window or stare at the table, looking preoccupied. At last, she had no choice but to speak up in a coquettish voice. Elliot, let's talk about something, she said. I do have something to ask you, Haley, said Elliot as he looked up at her. I hope you can tell me the truth. Chapter 218 Anastasia is selfish Haley nodded immediately, feeling joyful. Sure, I'll tell you everything you want to know, Haley, you were friends with Anastasia growing up. I want to know how she lost her chastity and who was the guy who defiled her, Elliot asked as he stared gravely at her. Haley's smile frozen upon hearing his question. With that, she pursed her lips and let out a murky breath. That's what you want to know. Please tell me about it. Haley, it was evident Elliot wasn't going to take no for an answer. Haley didn't know what to do. The man sitting across from her had no clue that he was the one who defiled Anastasia back then. Of course, she wouldn't let Elliot shoulder such an offense. She took a deep breath at that, for she had long been mentally prepared for this day to come. Poor Anastasia. That night traumatized me as well since it only happened because she came to save me. If I hadn't phoned her, she wouldn't have gone into that room, and she wouldn't have encountered that psycho. Even when Anastasia wrongly accused me of what happened, I still admitted that everything was my fault. What did she wrongly accuse you of? Elliot frowned. When Haley looked up, her eyes were red-rimmed and filled with remorse. Then, she drew a deep breath. I know no one can accept such an experience happening to them. Anastasia is a strong woman, but still, she has lost her virginity. She hates me. She said I had purposely arranged for that man to be in there, and I created the tragedy that befell her. I accept all her accusations since I do deserve to be demoned. In fact, I shouldn't have asked her to come at all. I was with some clients at that time, and they were being handsy, so I asked Anastasia to come and save me. However, I didn't expect her to go to the wrong room and fall into that man's. Haley closed her eyes at that, and beads of tears fell the next second. Elliot's heart grew incredibly heavy as well. Was this how everything went down for Anastasia? Coldness glazed his eyes as he asked, In that case, do you remember where it all happened? That's the one thing I don't want living in my head. I only know that it was in a small nightclub, and I can't remember the name anymore. I've been trying to forget about this, but I can never forget how Anastasia looked when she came out disheveled. She wouldn't stop emphasizing how horribly Anastasia had been defiled back then, for she believed Elliot would definitely mind it. Surely, 
someone as outstanding and noble as him must have some sort of oct. Hence, he wouldn't touch Anastasia ever again. However, she bit her lower lip in anger when she saw the popping veins on his clenched fists that were on the table. Was Elia feeling furious for Anastasia? Nevertheless, she continued to let her tears fall, acting like she was a victim as much as Anastasia was. I also think I deserve to be demoned for letting her suffer such a traumatic experience. However, what I don't understand is why Anastasia still gave birth to his child when she loathed that night so much, flabbergasted Elliot exclaimed without thinking, are you saying that the man back then is Jared's father? Haley nodded at that. I guess so. Do you think Anastasia is able to accept other men when something like that has happened to her? I'm sure she finds all men repulsive. With that, Elliot fell into deep thought. It seems like Jared is that bestard's son. Elliot, I know you care about Anastasia because her mother sacrificed her life to save you. It's only right that you look after her. Elliot didn't recall telling Haley about this, but then again, seeing how close she and Anastasia used to be when growing up, it wouldn't be surprising for her to learn about it. I am indeed racked with guilt for her family. In that case, do you know why Anastasia still conceived the child? Elia couldn't figure out Anastasia's reason for doing so as well. Nonetheless, given how adorable the boy was, he was happy that Jared had come into this world. I don't know. Knowing Anastasia, she's a headstrong woman. Her father even chased her out back then because of this. He thought she had brought disgrace to their family and had shown him up. As for why she conceived the child, she probably had no other choice. I worry about how the child should face a father who defiled his mother though. Poor kid, Anastasia shouldn't have kept him, all in all. Haley was trying to hint that Anastasia was nothing but selfish. Chapter 219 Keep me company Elliot's heart tightened when he heard Haley's words. So, she really was kicked out of her house, huh? Is that why she was abroad for five years? But he believed the reason Anastasia conceived Jared was that the child's adorableness could heal her pain. Jared was like a cure for Anastasia, liberating her from that horrific experience. This little one, on the other hand, needed love and care, and it would be his duty from now on. Just then, the dishes were served. Haley was looking forward to dinner when she made the orders, but now she felt as though she was chewing wax. Who'd have thought Elliot invited her to dinner only to learn about Anastasia's past? At the end of the day, all he had in mind was Anastasia. Elliot, Anastasia's a sweet girl. If it weren't for that encounter, she would be living a happy life. Haley continued to put on her Saint Fod in front of Elliot. Elliot, however, was still deep in his thoughts. After hearing Haley's words, he nodded in agreement, for the rest of Anastasia's life had everything to do with him now. He would give her the happily ever after she deserved. Then, Haley thought of something, and she shyly asked, Say, Elliot, has Anastasia ever asked you about us? However, Elliot's gaze at her was clear and collected. Haley, what happened between us was a mistake. I've hurt you unconsciously that night, and I'll make it up to you in my own way. I don't blame you, Elliot. Really? Maybe I've suffered for five years, but after knowing you, those sufferings became sweet experiences. Haley tried her best to confess her love for him. Too bad Elliot didn't feel the same for her. It's best that you don't dwell on that night. It'll do nothing but harm to you. After all, no, I'm happy as long as it's you. Haley shook her head like a rattle. She was beyond willing to experience such happiness again. Elliot, I, anytime you want, I'm willing to. Just then, Elliot's phone rang, and she looked exasperatedly at the caller ID, only to find it was Anastasia. Immediately, a fire raged beneath her eyes. Oh, how she wanted to kill this be chi chi She swore Anastasia had deliberately called to meddle at this time. On the other hand, Elliot hurriedly grabbed his phone and stood up. Let me take this call, okay, Haley beamed, suppressing her raging fire. With that, he went to the empty private room next door and answered the call with a gentle voice. Hello? 
Mr. Pressgrave, you've promised to play with me downstairs. Why haven't you come? The little one's voice traveled from the other end of the line. Can you wait for me, Jared? I'll go over once I'm done with dinner. Really? You'll still come over, Mr. Pressgrave? I will. I never go back on my words, Elliot promised. He adored the child immensely, even if they weren't related by blood. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. All right, I'll get there soon, Elliot promised again. After hanging up, he checked the time and returned to the private room. When he saw that Haley had barely eaten, he couldn't help asking, Haley, are you done eating? Are you leaving? She couldn't help panicking. Must he go as soon as Anastasia called? Yeah, I still have something I have to get to first. I'll have Daniel send you home, but Elliot, I, I hope you can finish this dinner with me. Haley wished he could stay, but when he looked over with his suit jacket in his hand under the light, she lost all courage and bit her lip aggrievedly. Why you go ahead then? I'll be fine. I'm sorry, Haley. I'll treat you to another meal, Elliot apologized, standing on ceremony, before striding out. Now that he was gone, Haley could throw her fat away and bear her bitter, resentful face. Anastasia, of all people, it has to be Anastasia. That Bichichi shrouded her like a nightmare she couldn't drive away no matter how. With that, she picked up her phone and called Daniel. Daniel, come up here and keep me company. Chapter 220 She hates him because she hates Haley Daniel came up into shakes, and when he saw Haley chugging liquor, he snatched the glass from her. Don't drink like this, Miss Seymour. You'll get sick, Daniel. Haley got up and hugged him. She seriously needed a man, and she didn't want to give herself a hard time, even if she couldn't have Elliot to herself. His body stiffened at her contact. He tried to push her away, but she had a tight grip around his neck. Don't leave me too, Daniel. Hug me, Daniel obliged half-heartedly. Though Haley knew she was leaning against Daniel, she couldn't stop thinking about Elliot. With that, she closed her eyes and consoled herself by thinking she was hugging Elliot. Meanwhile, at Anastasia's home, Jared waited in his room for Elliot to arrive after making a sneaky call to him. Meanwhile, Anastasia was busy with house chores and it was already around 8.00 p.m. by the time she was done with their laundry. Just as she was about to return to her room to continue working, the doorbell rang. Hum, who could it be at this hour? With that, she walked to the door and found Elliot standing outside through the peephole. She was surprised he would still come. Isn't he supposed to be on a date with Haley? What the hell is he doing here? The doorbell rang again, and she knew he wasn't going to leave anytime soon. Hence, she opened the door with frustration and pulled a grim face. It's already late at night. What are you doing here? I'm here to play with Jared. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll play with my son. Please leave, Anastasia said indifferently. However, the little one ran out from behind her at that moment. You're here, Mr. Pressgrave. Let's play downstairs. Anastasia stared at her son as she watched him dashing out the door to hold Elliot's hand and say, I didn't expect you to come so soon, Mr. Pressgrave. She was once again rendered speechless. Had her son called Elliot to come over? Mommy, please don't be mad at Mr. Pressgrave. I called and asked him to come to play with me. Jared looked back at his mother. Apart from speechlessness, she was now troubled as well. With that, she reprimanded. Jared, who said you could bother him as you please. I've told you before that he's a very busy man. He doesn't have the time to play with you. Why can't you listen? It was rare for Anastasia to get upset over her son, but right then, she was truly pissed. She thought her son was being inconsiderate by calling Elliot over when he was on a date with Haley. I'm sorry, mommy. Jared drooped his head and apologized when he realized he had angered his mother. It was Elliot's first time seeing Anastasia reprimanding the little one, and with that, he carried Jared up and looked at the little fellow with distress before turning to Anastasia. I have the time. I'm more than happy to play with Jared, so please don't scold him anymore. Anastasia didn't want to scold her son either, but she was in a bad mood that day, 
and she didn't want to have any more to do with Elliot either. So, she wished Jared would stop being attached to Elliot and stay away from him even more so. Jared, come back inside and let Mr. Pressgrave go home. With that, she came out and reached out with her hands to carry Jared, who immediately leaned toward her. On the other hand, Elliot was actually afraid of Anastasia at this moment. He was worried that he had hurt her with his words or disturb her, and she'd even hate him. He just learned from Haley how Anastasia got hurt, how she conceived and birthed the child of the man who defiled her, and how she was chased out of her own home. It was only normal for Anastasia to repulse men when she had been through all she had. With that, he tried to explain, saying, Anastasia, I mean no harm. I no need to explain, President Pressgrave. I know you have a date with Haley. I'm sorry that my son has bothered you guys. Anastasia looked plainly at Elliot as she carried her son in her arms. Elliot's breathing stopped for a split second after she finished speaking and he frowned. How did you know I was having dinner with Haley? However, Anastasia didn't want to talk. Just the thought of him exhibiting his excellence on top of Haley and fulfilling his biological imperative had Anastasia thinking the air around him was suffocating. As she hated Haley, she hated him as well. She wanted nothing to do with anyone or anything related to Haley. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.